Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, we are here at the Dork Vision stream. Uh, we stream Sundays 9 to 12 Eastern Time. Uh, you can also catch the sister stream on Wednesday from 7 to 10 Eastern Time. Uh, last time on the Dork Vision stream, the players, uh, well, they came back from space. Um, after that minor incident happened, uh, you guys started investigating the uh, gnomish inventions uh, down at Mouse Lane, where all the gnomes hang out in Urzark, the quarry town. Uh, after purchasing some uh, anti-gravity boots with questionable value, um, <laughs> Amon spoke with a merchant from the Merchant's Consortium, Thrazir, and he gave them a quest uh, under the pretense that a fair deal needs to be struck in order to find Famladan, uh, and that it must be for something of great value. So, uh, he asked them to bring him the Crown of the Fire Giants, which was last seen at some spires to the southwest, uh, southeast. Uh, southwest. Um, and then, uh, the last thing that you guys did, I think, was head out and find some, uh, people that you could interact with, um, or people that could lead you to this place. Uh, so you picked up uh, two of the Marn, which is what they call the half-works there, uh, Tethys Morgun and Pran. Um, they're both in it for the money, it seems. Um, oh, also, uh, some other stuff happened. Uh, Zumasu, you met um, Shard of Jade, uh, Maria's new boyfriend, cat friend. Um, don't think about it. Don't think about it that much. Um, oh. Oh my what God. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh no. I guess uh, somebody's cat. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> let's go to Urzark. I have a message on my phone. <laughs> Interesting. So. Uh, after you guys have uh, found uh, your two allies, you've told them to uh, meet you as soon as they can uh, at the local inn known as the Starlit Gazelle. Uh, Zumasu is doing a hard day's labor, uh, but I think that you have finished that up and you have reconvened with your allies. Uh, you guys meet up at the Starlit Gazelle. What do you guys want to do? Do you want to I do was... anything before the uh, two Marn leaders uh, arrive? Guides, I should say. Are we going today? Because I thought this would have been like we set off in the morning. Anyway, I'd probably come back and let them know the basics of what happened and how Maria spotted me. I won't tell them too much detail other than she's going to keep quiet about it. And that... Yeah, but how did the reunion go? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> uh, I I'd rather not talk about it. Um, Ooh, spicy. Okay. Um, I also got a little info on the general consensus. I'm going to make sure that the Marnar are in shot of kind of like the feelings here. They're, it's pretty much like Alora is occupying here. The they're, they're, They got mixed feelings about it. This town was originally made by the half-orcs, and then the Alora just kind of took it, like, kind of take it under its jurisdiction. So, mm. uneasy tension there. Understandable makes sense, you know, based off of the things that we found in the tent. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like they've done anything that's too like, you know, wrong, but the Marn would probably have been fine with just, you know, their chiefs and shamans being the leaders of the town, technically. Well, we'll deal with that later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, maybe if we you... topple over, you know, a Taurus and everything else, then they don't have to worry about ruling here. Hmm. Yeah, they have Anarchy. one representative in the Senate, so it's not exactly like they get the best representation. Yeah, that's like one out of hundreds in the Senate. Yeah. Uh, well, the consuls in the Senate. Yeah, so they don't get much representation back home, so maybe that is something reform-wise later. Did you guys find any leads on um, a guide? My my day labor didn't find anything other than to check out this tavern. That's that's what I'm bringing you to. Amon 
he messaged me and I point to the the earring and I was like, we're just gonna go meet up with him. He said that he's got he's got some folk ready to go. I don't know. That's he's gonna tell us when we get there. Well, I guess that solves that problem. He said uh, thank you. He said thank you. Did I? Thank you. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Made an impression apparently. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyway, let's go. It's this way. All right. Um, Amon meets you guys back at the, uh, or actually, you guys, uh, can go meet them if you want. Yeah, that, I, that was the point where we're supposed to meet Amon at the, the tavern. All right. With the Marn. Uh, you head over to the Swill, which is that building over there, um, and you find, uh, Amon is, uh, just getting some of his stuff together. Uh, you see the two Marn, uh, one hooded figure, uh, and one wearing kind of like a fightery sort of getup, like, got like, uh, harnesses and armor and whatnot. Uh, that one seems to be wielding a short sword, and the other seems to be unarmed. Um, Amon is there getting, uh, his stuff already, and, uh, you guys all enter the swill. It's, uh... I described it last time, but it's a very bleak-looking place uh, with a trough filled with uh, alcohol that's not the best alcohol uh, that a lot of the laborers and workers uh, convene at. Well, I will head over to Amon. Be like, hey, you brought him. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna ask for a, pi uh, a, a pitcher or whatever, and then go get a trough of alcohol. Okay. Uh, you head over, uh, to the innkeeper, and it's just, like, a couple copper pieces, uh, about two or three. I... He just gives you a cup and you go over to the trough? Yep. <laughs> okay. You head over to the trough, uh, and fill up your mug. It's pretty rank and pretty vile. Uh, not something that someone who's, uh, used to the Aloran Vintner's goods, uh, would be used to. Is it strong? Not particularly. It's watered down. It's swill, remember? Damn. This is gonna take a lot to get... to make me feel anything. I'm gonna take one big gulp and then keep on filling it up and then head over. Uh, a lot of the Marn are, like, looking at you. Um, just kind of, like, bewildered. Uh... You head back to the table where Amon is uh, introducing the other people, or not. They might introduce themselves. Uh, insight check. Okay. Uh, make an Do insight check. Any of them seem like they're up to no good, or they actually don't want to help us. Okay. They just want to get out. Uh, you just look them up and down and get a general look at them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, you kind of like look them up and down. Um, the hooded figure, uh, looks kind of, uh, awkward, like, uh, to you. They seem to be very sure of themselves, which you're not used to seeing, except in maybe Zumasu when he's fighting. But that's about it. Mm. That's about it, uh, for him. The other, uh, the other guy is, um, he, he looks kind of, like, not totally invested. He's just kind of like uh, looking off in the distance, um, just kind of sizing you guys up. Um, he seems to be mostly in it for the money. Is that the Pran or Tethys? That, that's Pran. Okay. Uh, eventually, uh, Pran just kind of like comes over to you guys. Uh, hey, um, uh, I'm, I'm Pran. I'm one of the people your uh, friend Amon hired. How's it going? You good to you good to go? Did Amon say when we should head out? And I looked at Amon. Well, he said to meet you guys as soon as possible, so we got our stuff and came back here. No. Oh. Mm. Would you be willing to? I, I, Amon, would we be willing to go first thing in the morning? I kind of, I'm kind of a little tired. I, I ended up working all day. Jeez. Ride a horse. I mean, like walking. I guess. How far uh, do we kind of know the general area? How long it'll take to reach there? Uh, Tethys. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna point to Teth Tethys and just like um, let him talk. Okay. How long does it travel? Uh, Tethys uh speaks up. I'm 
Tethys Morgan, and I will be your official guide. I've seen the spires before, and I can remember where they are. But, uh... I'd say if I had to put my finger on it, uh, probably three days by horse. Given the rough terrain, it might take a tad longer. On foot, it would take a lot farther. A lot longer. Okay. okay. Well, we do have right access to mounts and stuff. Do you guys have any access to mounts? We can get some. I'm gonna need a, uh, an advance, Bran says, if, if I'm gonna get a horse. Um, that's fine. I thought I, thought I already uh, gave him an advance. Oh, uh, I forgot. How much was that? 25 gold, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, okay. He, he says, uh, yeah, uh, never mind. I got it right here. Sorry. How much is a horse in these parts? Oh, you know. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look that up in the player's handbook, probably. <laughs> a what? But yeah, we can uh, we can get you guys there. I know can the we landscape. Secure an extra horse. Can we secure an extra horse? Yeah, if I give you money, can you buy me a horse? Well, yeah, we can take you there. Stables are open to everyone, not just Marn. All right, fine. I I won't pay you extra for doing this. I'll do it myself. Sorry, just looking up the uh, yeah, mounts. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, if we're if we're looking to uh, rent a horse, that's probably going to be the best option for us. Otherwise, you can buy one for seventy-five gold. Do we want to buy one? I kind of, I kind of. This isn't a side something I'm quite here. I'm just talking about. Do you just want to straight up bar one? I want to. If the horse dies, as they tend to in the scablands, you do have to pay a security fee. Yeah, I'm just gonna buy a horse if that happens. So at least that way we can eat it if it's about to die. That's usually fair. But All right. Either way, seventy-five isn't gonna be enough if I'm gonna buy a horse. But. uh... How much was the full pay again? Uh, it, it was separate for the, the two different people. One was like, one was like fifteen, and one was like like twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pran probably has the fifteen if he. Yep. Uh, he just wanted to get out. He just wanted more. the money. Um, he he does say if if he's gonna rent a horse, he's gonna expect a share of the loot. Tethys yeah, is probably also going to speak up and say. If we do find an exceptional amount, I'm going to ask for some as well. Bring it back to the church here. Guys, yeah, how much should we offer them? There's there's already uh, four of us, there would be six of them, so what do we give them, like, 20% split between two of them? I was so... Okay, so I have a question. Do we know anything about, about fire giants at all? About their temperament? Uh, you can make a knowledge check, intelligence check. I would count history. Uh, the book that we've acquired. Uh, um, the monster manual thing. Volo's guide. Yeah, the Volo's guide. Hold on. That yeah, has Volo's guide. That has a lot of information on the Underdark, but you could also probably try and use it, see if he's got any information in there. Okay. Okay, I'll do that then. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is going to be a smash and grab, or whether we can actually talk anything out with the fire giant and just exchange the crown out. Um, Not 20? <laughs> that was a nature check. Uh, oh, but, but... Yeah, I might have you reroll that. It's, it's a different check. Oh, so, history... 21. Okay, still very good. Uh, so <laughs> still pretty good. Uh, Amon, you kind of recollect uh, some information about fire giants. Um, 
you've heard tales that they are uh, very territorial, um, but that's mostly all you remember. Uh, Booncrash, you do find an entry in Volo's Guide. It seems that they do have a presence in the Underdark. Uh, they're usually in the far west uh, in a, like, volcanic area. Uh, true to their name, they're pretty much resistant to fire. Um, otherwise, uh, they're generally... They, they tend to have a lawful or evil temperament. Uh, they're very organized, uh, and they tend to, like, build permanent settlements. Okay, I convey this to the party. So, nothing about their temperaments at all. Uh, They're just territorial. Yeah, territorial, lawful, evil, build permanent settlements. That means that you probably can't reason with them unless you really got a good deal. So I'm going to guess we probably either have to steal something or fight them. Alright, alright then. You know what, they can, they can, they can uh, take the share. So 20% split between two of you, 10% each? That sound fair? Yeah, sure. You guys are the heroes of this story. I mean, I, not for nothing, I don't know if things get really dicey how much help you're going to be, but uh, we've seen our fair share of monsters. Yeah, I Jesus mean, Christ. we're hirelings, so don't it's fair. Don't stop trying to promise them protection. We can't protect them if shit goes down. No, no, that, we that's are protect, that's we're actually what I was saying. Down down. I was saying if things I, get I, dicey, I don't expect them to necessarily like uh, put themselves in heavy danger. Certainly not if they're away, making but... only 10% uh, of the loot. But they can watch there. Uh, Tethys kind of just nods his head and says, Kaifun will take what it can get. If that is what you will give us, then Kaifun will take it. Alright, let's get on. Let's get on with it. Alright. We're heading out tomorrow. Is that what I heard from this one points at Sumasu. I figure we could all get a good night's sleep getting right bright eyed and bushy tailed. Alright, sounds good. I will make my prayers tonight for a safe journey, Tethys says. And Bran says, Yeah, I'll uh I'll go sleep. Just kinda looks weirdly at Tethys. Um and you guys can go back to your inn and get a good night's sleep. Uh, anything else you want to do before you whisper. guys leave? I'm, I'm going to talk to Mal for a second. Sure. <laughs> so, sort of an aside. Mal, can you just grab something of Franz real quick? Just something small, minor. Uh, I just want to see if he's on the up and up later. I like the way you think. I'm going to go and try and slide a hand something, I guess, from his pocket or like a piece of cloth, something of his. Okay. Uh, make a sleight of hand check. rude sleight of hand check. Uh, yeah, he actually uh, notices uh -oh. you slipping by him, uh, and he goes and grabs at your hand like, almost very quickly, uh, and it kind of shocks you for a second and he kind of like, lifts your hand up to his face. What are you doing? I was giving you a tip. What's wrong with you? I'm gonna like, try and shuffle some coins. <laughs> into my hand. Make a new sleight of hand check. <laughs> Fucking A. What is- what? No. Alright, it's not broken. You, uh, kind of like start, uh, fumbling in your other hand, uh, for some coins, and you kind of like, uh, scatter one on the ground. You can't really get it up to your other hand, um, but you made it kind of seem like it maybe like dropped, dropped out it. of your hand. Um, Pran uh, just kind of like uh, narrows his eyes at you. <sighs> he leans down and takes up the coin. Next time, just give it to me. Yeah, I don't need your works. handouts, but I'll take them. Uh huh. Yeah. Fuck you too. Thanks for your help. Bye. <sighs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? He saw you. No, it's actually through. wrong with you. Like, how the fuck did you fumble that check? All right. Yeah, not why <laughs> did you make that check? Down. How could you fumble that check? <laughs> <laughs> did we all see this or not? Uh, yeah, it kind of made a scene. 
Everybody was kind of waiting for a fight to break out uh, for a split second. I'm not talking about it. I'm just gonna mumble away. Sorry, Mal. <laughs> oh, we still love you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining the three of you standing in line, and then I'm just walking past all of you, and each of you saying like this one little thing, and then in the end, it's Amon being like. We don't. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I just kind of mumble, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I made you do that. Uh, okay. Um, anyone doing anything during the night? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to try will... scrying on him anyway. Okay. Uh, you don't have great knowledge of him. I'm going to need to, as usual, look yeah. up and see how the scry spell works for unfamiliar targets. Because I kind of know how it works for familiar yeah. ones. Is it... I, you do realize I can probably just figure out and just kind of spy on him for you. I that mean, he's me. probably on alert for you anyway, so... You know, now he is. Now, yeah. you don't have any likenesses, so he just has a plus zero to the save, because you have met them. Uh, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Oh, I actually don't know what the DC is for a scrying orb. Uh, is that what it's called? Crystal ball. Yeah, crystal ball. Cristobal. I think it's DC... Ooh, DC 17. Okay. That's not awful. That's not awful. Um, yeah, you uh, eventually start uh, looking into your amber ball uh, while you're sitting at the inn. Um, you've waited an hour or so. Um, and you see Pran. Uh, Pran comes into view within the crystal, and He's just kind of, uh, like, sitting about uh, in a, um, it looks like an inn. Uh, from the looks of the stone, it's not one of the, like, foreigner inns. It's one of the native Marn ones. Um, and it looks like he's just, like, doing his, like, bedtime routine. Getting some warm milk. So... <laughs> <laughs> Should I like do an investigation or insight to see anything in particular? You can try an insight check. Okay. I don't see shit. Yeah, uh, I mean, the warm milk is uh, familiar to you, but everything else is just kind of... You don't know how common it is for, for Marn uh, to do such things, um, but it generally looks innocuous. Just like putting clothes away... Um, just, uh, you know, it's passive stuff. They're not doing anything unusually suspicious. Okay. Guess that's all I got. It's like struggling in my mind to think of going to bed things, and it's mostly like going to the bathroom and like uh, taking off clothes. You see him clothes. taking a giant dump. <laughs> Does Yikes. he lay out his? Is he the kind of guy who lays out his clothes for tomorrow, or does he like sleep in those and kind of have his clothes in a pile? Okay, um, I'm gonna say uh, he does uh, have his clothes uh, fairly neat. Uh, he seems to take pride in that sort of thing. Okay, that wow. is character trait. Yeah, we got a character trait. Good question. <laughs> okay, um, if that's it for everybody, uh, you guys wake up uh, in the morning. Um, dawn uh, comes at a slight delay in Urzark, you find out, uh, just because of the high cliff walls. It takes a while for the sun actually to get overhead. Um, but the Marn are already awake. They're already going out to the mines, out to the wall. Um, and you guys head over to the Swill to meet up with Pran and Tethys, who are once again uh, there. Pran is already there uh, and kind of waiting. Tethys uh, takes some time to get there. Sorry, I'm late. I was co still conferring with the deities. No problem, bud. You know how it is. We make haste. Let us ride. Lead the way. Stables, unless they did they bring the horses? Uh, yeah. Did I just miss? Okay. It, so they, it looks they like, like Tethys did bring a horse. Uh, Pran didn't. Um, you guys head to the, uh, the market area, um, and there is someone there who is selling and renting horses. Um, it looks like, uh, they have a, um, they're able to, uh, sell or rent the horses 
for a minimum of 25 gold pieces and you get a deposit on the way back uh, if you return um, with the horse uh, you get 15 gold pieces back um, I'm just gonna buy my horse okay it's about 75 though you can try and bargain for less I'll just give him 8 platinum okay um, Pran just uh, kind of like tries to side eye the person and be like hey uh, can you uh, put some of that towards uh, towards a rental for me I'm kind of short on cash. And uh, the store owner, well, not store owner, the stables owner, uh, shakes their head and goes, Nope, it's got to be up front. <sighs> Guys, I, I wouldn't normally ask, but I'm probably going to need some more. I can pay you back I'm, in uh, if we get any treasure. I'm just going to buy, okay, I'm just going to uh, give, uh, I'll rent the horse for him. Let it be done. <sighs> Thanks. Uh, okay, you put up another, you put up 25 gold pieces, uh, for a horse for Pran. And that's it. Uh, Mao, you have a new riding horse. Tethys seems to have theirs, and Pran now has theirs. Uh, the rest of you have magical abilities and whatnot. Um, Amon, are you doing anything like getting a horse? I know that your nightmare doesn't last all the time. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna get a horse myself, uh... Okay. I, I, I will uh, get a, I'll rent a horse. Okay, that's 25 gold, and then uh, put down that it's a 15 gold deposit. Parentheses. So you get that back if you come back here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you guys head up the ramp, leaving Urzark uh, after purchasing your stuff. Uh, you guys don't really need to worry about rations, because you can summon food out of the ether um, and whatnot. Uh, the Leaf Crown uh, is there to, like, kind of be a checkpoint. Uh, they kind of, like, make note of who's leaving, um, ask for your names and whatnot. Uh, I'm assuming you guys give false names that you've been standardly giving Spent. people. Spent. and Tea Kettle. Um, okay. Uh, then you guys leave Urzark, and let's go to the world map. Do -do 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 -do. Huh. There we go. Okay, so, uh, Tethys, uh, starts leading you guys along the way. Oh, I didn't take them over. They might need to make checks. Copy. Do, do, do. I hate that it always deposits me at the top left of the map. There we go. Okay, uh, they have told you that... It is in the southeast. So let's start heading that way. Um, you guys start heading along the uh, the more deserted parts of the Scablands. A lot of this was um, like leading up to Urzark. It was kind of like uh, hills and like a bit grassy with just some like kind of stony outcroppings. Uh, upon getting to Urzark and beyond, the atmosphere is very uh, cracked earth. Uh, there's also some like stretches of sand. There's also uh, some slightly more fertile regions with like low scrub. But the main feature of the Scablands, which you guys are somewhat familiar because you visited the fort a while ago, um, the Scablands are sort of namesake for their uh, kind of red rocky mountains. Uh, that kind of pockmark the place like uh, gross, like half-healed scabs. Um, and that's kind of the general atmosphere of the place. Uh, let's get Tethys to do some survival checks. Can the bird help him at all with a viewpoint? Um, yeah. Uh, Goose can like uh, go up and do some scouting, but Tethys is mostly relying on the fact that he's able to recall some of the places that he's been. Uh, he uh, is able to just barely uh, get you guys uh, in the right direction. You start heading east um, on your riding horses. The terrain is rather treacherous uh, as you're going along this way. Um, I'm going to need you guys to uh, 
do a few checks because um, when it gets to a point uh, you kind of descend uh, deeper into a large stretch of the scab lands, a kind of dust bowl, uh, and you guys are going to need to climb down a precipice, uh, probably uh, with the help of Booncrash's telekinesis, if, uh, if I'm to assume that uh, is your oh. usual mm -hmm. thing. So I'm going to have each of you make uh, athletics checks, and Booncrash, I'm going to say that yours automatically succeeds uh, and can give somebody advantage. I can't give everybody advantage? <laughs> um, I'm going to say, mm. uh, sure. I probably mm. shouldn't, but uh, everybody, everybody gets advantage. Yes! That's good. I'm, I'm so glad that I, I did that. <laughs> okay. I didn't need any help. <laughs> Getting used to their abilities. Um, that's good, because Pran and Tethys didn't do so well. The riding horses, uh, you are kind of able to um, force them down. Uh, they're rather uncomfortable with the whole situation, but eventually uh, you're able to calm them down enough to get them down. Um, the rest of you have succeeded, uh, mostly. Uh, Tethys is the only one that seems to have been having trouble uh, getting down there. He was like taking a climbing a stretch while you were uh, dragging the horses down, uh, but you managed to catch him before he fell. Um, and you guys uh, start to continue on your way. The horses are a bit spooked, though. Uh, the ones that aren't, uh, you know, magical. So I'm going to have Amon and Mao make some animal handling checks to handle your rides. And have the All other right. dudes do some as well. What was the check? Animal handling. Thank you. Yeah, this is not my knife, guys. Okay. You needed to name your horses. <laughs> yeah, that nope. was the problem. I have not named my horse. <laughs> I just kind of give it a pat oh, on the, the side. Although horses already have names attached to them, so... Mm. Uh, they do have names attached to them. Uh, Mao did not ask. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Amon, yours and Tethys's... Uh, are still freaking out from the weird um, telekinetic shadows that were gripping them and dragging them down the mountain. Uh, they uh, are more difficult to control, and I'm going to say that uh, this is going to put a damper on uh, your next checks, depending. Uh, but eventually, they do calm down. Uh, they're just a little cautious of their new uh, owners, kind of. Um, let's continue. Uh, you guys have been traveling uh, for a bit, about half a day. Tethys is going to make another survival check as they go along. Okay, uh, this one's a bit easier. Uh, Tethys starts pointing you uh, a bit in a more southerly direction. Um, eventually the sun starts going down. Um, but uh, in the midst of this, uh, as the sun is starting to like approach over the horizon, uh, it's not quite dusk, uh, but Tethys kind of like leans back to you guys. We should start looking for a place to uh, settle in. Um, and after a while, um, a wind starts to pick up, and what comes with it is sand. Uh, there is like a veritable cloud of like dust just moving over the landscape. Uh, this is common. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to hunker down somewhere. Um, Tethys starts, like, leading you guys through this area. Uh, he leads you into, like, a lower part, um, of the Scablands, uh, trying to find some place to, like, duck down and cover. We can't really make a settlement. We're gonna have to find some place. Find some cover from wherever this blasted sands coming from um and then eventually uh as you're going through the sand i'm gonna have tethys and uh who's in front by the way for marching order i guess i probably would be okay 
Uh, then I'm going to have you and Tethys make perception checks. Okay. Uh, you guys, uh, Mao is kind of like uh, blinded by the sand, like getting in her cloak's eyes. She kind of like pulls another uh, cloak over it to like protect the thing. Um, Tethys as well is like just trying his darndest to keep the sand out of his eyes. Um, when eventually uh, the sand dies down for a few seconds and you guys find that there's a lot of humanoids like a mere 30 feet away from you. Uh, they look just as surprised as you are to see them. Um, and uh, one of them grabs for their swords and starts barking in goblin back at the other ones. Go snap from the park! And then several hobgoblins wearing heavy armor start running, oh, uh, and a large uh, wagon with a ballista mounted on it, dragged by a hyena, uh, starts like crawling around from the side of a giant precipice. Uh, we're going to go there and roll for initiative once we do. And I'm also going to arrange this a bit more properly based on your description. Uh, for instance, I just assumed Mao didn't want to buy a horse, so Fuck I didn't you. give her one. <laughs> I also just assumed Sumasu was riding Mortimer, but that well, could go. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, can a lizard go in the desert? I figured I'd be riding Gregory. I mean, a lizard's probably just better ride, in the just desert. Ride the horse. Don't, don't, don't be a special snowflake. Just ride the damn horse. Can will be better, but... Yeah, I mean, work. I'll just I'll be on the horse, but it's a lizard. It looks like a lizard, but it's a horse. <laughs> Sure. Horse. A snow lizard. That's exactly. It's like the, what the it horses is. from Avatar. It's an anteater horse reptilian insect thing. No, hold on a second. I need to make sure I don't grab certain things. Okay. That's not a good sign. Well. They have wagons, but they're objects, so it would roll for their initiatives if I did initiative with everybody. Uh, uh, and now i got to put them back in the right layer. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's get slightly more exciting music. Okay. Indeed. Uh, okay, so you guys are like... Uh, walking in a tight line, uh, and then Tethys points uh, to the hobgoblins. Mao, you actually have the initiative. What would you like to do? I'm going to say for good. ease of uh, movement, I'm going to say that your horses have the same initiative as you. When we get to their initiative, I'm just going to delete them in the initiative order. Cool. Um, hmm. So a riding horse, I'll tell you, has a 60-foot movement speed. I think high ground is a good thing. Okay. Uh, I will also note this is not Skyrim. Uh, the horses do not climb vertical surfaces. <laughs> but I can go... That is, that is a, a high ground area. Over yep. There on the left uh, side. I just put a dynamic lighting where you can't, like, see over the top of it. Um, you could probably head over... Like, the horse could probably climb up the first kind of layer there. It's kind of separated in tiers. What about that on the left-hand side? Uh, where are you pointing? I can't click. I can't ping more. Top left. Oh, top left. I, I see. Um, yeah, that you could probably walk over. <laughs> I just, is, so is that like a flat surface or is that elevated? Because it almost looks like there's ramps happening. Like This is, oh, uh, no, this is an individual thin rock. Uh, so this is, the, this is level with this. It's okay. it's not obscuring. It's probably half cover, if anything. I good. I will use it as half cover. I'm gonna move the horse over to that ridge then. Awesome. Uh, ooh. Okay, good. You can control it. I was about to wonder if that was a thing. Okay, you uh drag the horse over there, leap off, and tumble uh down behind one of the rocks. I think I'm just gonna shoot the closest one I can find. All right. Uh, there are several hobgoblins there. You also see some uh, gnolls. Uh, you've heard of gnolls. They're like hyena people. Uh, but uh, they are kind of like whooping and snarling um, in the background. You head over with Cindersmite and 
Uh, that is going to just barely hit. Wow. Uh, and 67 damage just completely destroys this dude. Uh, he goes down. I want to yell from the ridge and tell them all to not approach or they'll all die. <laughs> and then wave everybody to go and hide behind the, the ridge. Get, 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 get over here. Okay. This is one of the hidden dude's turns. Okay. Uh, they're gonna go over here. And, uh, they kind of, like, climb up on top of this ridge, uh, and they lift up, uh, like, a weapon in the air, uh, like a spear, and then just start hollering in abyssal. Uh, does anybody speak abyssal? Otherwise, it's just gibberish to you. I do. Uh, okay. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. I'm an ASMR. What are you talking about? Um, I do, too, for some reason. Uh, yeah. I think because cause you're a paladin. You hunt that sort of thing. Um, he starts shouting in abyssal, Yinogu will swallow your souls! Uh, and then he starts uh, trampling down the mountain. Uh, he's going to... Yeah, it's a zealot. We're, we're not going to scare these guys. I want a religion check that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you can do that while I'm calculating. I rolled pretty good this time. Okay, uh, this is about as far as he can make it. He just tramples down the, the slope and starts, like, running. Uh, what you roll? 20. Yeah, uh, Yinogu's pretty common in, uh, demonic circles. Uh, he's the deity of the gnolls. Uh, and is basically the demon of savagery. Right, uh, it is this hobgoblin's turn. Um... But dudes! Chill! Have some chill! They do not respond. Uh, this guy is going to take a shot, uh, over at... Tethys, I think. Do, do, do. And I need to familiarize myself. Okay, that does hit Tethys. Uh, he does have mage armor, but it like uh, still breaks through that. So it's he's gonna take nine damage. Uh, we're gonna ignore the nightmare. Um, also, this guy is readying his action to move. Uh, this hobgoblin is going to direct the hyena to uh, move, and then he's going to ready their action. Oh, this song is louder than the other ones. Uh, Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Mao, you can see off in the distance, uh, there is a hobgoblin that has, like, a banner on their back, um, and, uh, they have, like, a great horned helm, uh, and they're wearing much heavier, like, looking armor. Um, he, uh, starts shouting at his subordinates, uh, in goblin, Garsna! Norsna! Galamar Garsna! And then, uh, one of the, uh, hyenas kind of, like, looks back at him and, like, starts shouting something in common, uh, but you can't really make it out as it's not, like, facing you. Um, then the hobgoblin captain shouts back, and I'm gonna have you make a perception check. This one's listening-based. We've faced hobgoblins before, back at the fort. You have, yes. And they so, sucked. Right, but we also kind of know how they function a little bit better, right? Like, how their tactics work? Mm-hmm. They bum rush. That's their tactic. Oh. Yeah, bull bum rush, but also they follow a leader. Okay. Yeah, she's saying we go shoot out the guy at the top. If anything, leave that to man. We'll just keep the guys from killing our guides. Okay. Um. Or the mate, or the warlock could just you know cast the AOE to scatter them. So Mao, uh, it was very difficult to hear, uh, but you think you picked up? Uh... God, I'm trying to like word it. So the, the gnoll kind of, like, shouted back at him, um, and the hobgoblin was like, Just follow my orders, or I'll have your hide. The jaguar, uh, is gonna have your hide. Uh, I am not doing well tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. that's the, uh, that's the phrase that they shout, and it's in common, so you're able to just make out, uh, hearing it. And then... So, who, uh, just clarify, who was yelling at who for that? The hobgoblin was yelling at this dude. Okay. 
Uh, sorry about that. No, that's fine. I just wanted to clarify, because I, for some reason, thought he was yelling at the giant hyena, and the giant hyena was talking back to him. Nope, sorry. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, then he hops onto the back of this, like, wagon uh, as the hyena starts moving on their turn. Uh, we're gonna ignore the Phantom Steed's turn, and how does Mao have two her turns? We're gonna delete huh? that I one. I mean, you you deleted the Phantom Steed's turn, so it, it popped up twice, too, I guess. Mm. Anyway, uh, deleting this one. Okay, it's this guy's turn. Uh, this guy is going to... You see a hobgoblin. It's uh, holding a simple iron staff, uh, and it starts rushing towards the front line. Uh, it is going to... Do, 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 three, four, five, six... Uh, it is going to... Look at its spell's range, because it is uh, starting to cast a spell. Uh, it starts spinning its iron rod in the air, and then slams it down onto the ground, and a, like, mortar of fire comes out of the top of it and surges towards you guys. Um, a fireball lands, like, right uh, where about Zumasu is. I have, it's magic based, I have... It is magic based. I have that extra whatever. Okay. What's it called? Resistance? Uh, magic resistance. You have advantage on the save. It's gonna get, uh, Tethys. It's gonna get... I think everyone except Amon. Uh, and, you know, of course, Mal. Okay. I forgot to bonus action hide. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not hidden, but you have cover. Uh, so the fireball lands. I'm gonna need a uh, dexterity save from Zumasu, Boom Crash, uh, the Phantom Steed, Mortimer, Riding Horse Pran, Riding Horse Tethys. Okay. What you get for having NPCs and AOEs? Yeah. Anyone near enough to get my bonus? Uh, looks like just uh, her Phantom Steed. Actually, that should have a plus. Do it again. Okay. Uh, so, looks like the two horses uh, have failed. Uh, they are probably going down. Unfortunately, that didn't last long. God damn it. Uh, okay. Let's roll for damage. Uh, everybody else succeeded, so you're going to take half. The amount of combat is so bad in 5th edition. Yeah. Not so easily. That's why I got off. I wish, like, horses just had evasion or some shit. Can you make boarding your horse a thing? Cause, boarding? Because I feel like that that would, whatever it is where you give the horses actual armor. Because that seems to be a called barding. Yeah, barding. Yeah. Yes, you can. It doesn't help much. Uh, yeah, best yeah but that's not. what I don't get is... The, the bonuses to it just don't seem to correspond very well. If you'd you well, know, the I thing is, they also ones. automatically fail all of these like saves that deal a high yeah. amount of damage. Um, though having a war horse helps, because that has a good amount of HP. So each of you guys takes 15 damage. Uh, the That's going to not pop Mortimer, but it does pop the Phantom Steed. The other mm -hmm. horses are dying, um, so they're probably going to need attention if they want to live. Uh, Tethys takes 15, and Pran takes 15. See, every time I have a turn planned, people get hurt, and I have to just cast Cure Life Wounds. And, uh, Zimasu, you also took the 15. Okay. That Hobgoblin is done. Uh, another one of the gnolls starts coming up over the ridge. Uh, this one gets a bit more distance because it didn't have as far to climb, but otherwise it's done. It's this Hobgoblin's turn. Uh, they're going to probably just wait. Um, I kind of want these hobgoblins to move as a formation, so I'm actually going to remove some of their initiatives, I think. Uh, they're all going to move now. One, two, three, four. Six. Okay, so they can make it here. Uh, they move as a formation, and they start firing uh, at both Mao and Tethys. Uh... There are going to be two shots going at Mao. Uh, and Mao, you do have cover. Does a 19 hit you with plus 2 AC? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so you're going to take a whopping three piercing damage. Uh, meanwhile... Don't cry. Don't be a baby. <laughs> the other ones get two natural ones uh, fighting Tethys. Uh, as they, like, fire at Tethys, I'm going to say that uh, Tethys raises their hands uh, and shoots out, like, these uh, sort of sparkling uh, rainbowish uh, lights uh, out of their hands. It's his form of an Eldritch Blast, and they just incinerate the arrows before they get to him. And it's Tethys' turn. Uh, I know he just did a cool thing out of combat, uh, but he's going to uh, summon... How dare you have fun. <laughs> How dare you have fun. Uh, he summons a weapon uh, in his hands, uh, which materializes in the form of a great maul. Uh, after tumbling off of his horse, he starts engaging these dudes. Uh, he swings the maul around his head. And hits uh, for 17 damage. Uh, he doesn't have two attacks. No, he doesn't. Uh, so he's just going to end. He used his bonus action to summon his weapon. Uh, we're going to delete this guy because they move as a pack now. Uh, this guy. This other gnoll, gnoll uh, climbs up over the ridge and it seems to start moving with frightening speed. It rushes all the way over to Zumasu uh, and then ends its turn. Uh, but it is now right up in your face. Rude. Another one does the same thing. These guys uh, have a straight up action that's called, like, uh, Sudden Rush, and it essentially 1.5s their entire speed for the round. So it's like Cat Dash, but for it's, gnolls. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, hyenas are more closely related to cats anyway. This is true. These guys are going to start moving as a formation too, although I'm going to delete this guy's initiative after. Uh, they start heading over here. Can they move? Okay. They're going, they're going to uh, start surrounding Mal. Uh, and one of them's... They're going to start attacking, uh, except one of them's not going to, because one of them already did. So one of them takes out their longsword, and strikes at you for five slashing damage. However, it's also going to apply its martial advantage, because there's an ally near it. And you take an additional ten damage, so that's fifteen total. Do you wish to use a reaction of any sort? Uh, and can you dodge? Okay, uh, you take half damage, so you only take eight. Another one strikes at you. Uh, it's going to apply the same thing. Uh, this one's less, though. You only take 10 damage from the second strike. And then the third guy doesn't go. I'm going to delete this guy's initiative. Amon, it is finally your turn. You can move. Uh, I gave you the nightmare because I thought you'd have a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, here you go. what I think I'm going to do is... Uh, okay. Ah, uh, horse. Can you wonder me? Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, right there, okay. drive around people, uh, and then do, um, mass cure, I mean, not mass cure, uh, mass healing ward. Nice. Are you getting the I'm horses gonna, in this? I'm going to upcast it, uh, so... So I think I'm gonna okay, it's six creatures. Uh, so nice horse, horse, Mortimer, Mao, Tethys. Those would be the um, the dudes targets. Ooh, and everyone man. heals um, plus four, so fourteen. Nice. The horse is back. Yep, the horses are straight up back. I can just delete their X's. Uh, yeah, the Mortimer horses are prone, plus, but they are... Yeah, Mortimer gets plus 14. I guess plus 14, so... And, okay. I think I'm going to have to do... Uh, Toll the Dead onto... Okay, uh, your bells chime out. 
saving throw. Oh, he actually has a bonus. Not good enough, though. Uh, and he doesn't have all his hit points, so he's going to take 17. Uh, the Tethys, like, uh, kind of, like, starts backward and, like, looks back at uh, Amon uh, as he sees, like, where this is coming from. He seems to just nod at you and go back to beating the crap out of this dude. Um, the Knoll is, like, reeling in pain as, like, clumps of his fur start falling out. Uh, is that it for you? Uh, yes, that would be it. Right. Another one of these speedy gnolls leaps up from over the ridge and rushes down, uh, this time making it all the way to Amon. Um, and that's it for his turn. That's all they can do if they do a rush. Uh, we're going to delete Mortimer. That guy is dead. That guy is moving as a group. Boom Crash, it is your turn. Um... Quadruple sec. Um, so I'm gonna order Goose to fly the way the fuck off. Okay. And <laughs> oh I don't, shit! I Whatever. don't think you can recover. Well, Do you are you still selecting them? You can use the arrow keys. Nope. Damn it. <laughs> Goose is gone. <laughs> Goose is gone. That's okay. Um, I want to keep him sort of out of this as much as I possibly can. Um, I'm going to back way the f two, three, four, five, six. No, back back up. So scattering so the AoE is less effective. And do three Eldritch Blasts because I have three now. Oh. And that's very exciting. Yes. Um, I'm going to go for that dude. 26. 26 is definitely going to hit. Nice. Eight damage. Okay. So, uh, it's, okay. It starts rushing towards Amon, and then uh, in the midst, you just like back up and pshh, you knock the thing, and it like yelps as it backpedals uh, onto the ground. Second attack. Um, Sorry. Can I hit um, the ones that are going after Mortimer and Zumasu? Yeah, you certainly can. You can divide up your attacks. Sweet. Yep, that's gonna hit. Uh, as Mortimer's. Uh, kind of like reeling uh, and getting back onto their feet, uh, you knock another one away for six force damage. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, Eldritch Blast has heck of hell in range, so can I hit one of the hobgoblins that is attacking Mal? Uh, I think it's 120 feet. So we it, can. Okay, anything goes. Yeah. Anyway, we're blasting. You good. Oh, excuse you. Don't work with me here. Come on. Trying, man. <laughs> oh, 18. Okay. Uh, that just barely hits the Hobgoblin's AC. Oh, shit. Okay. Nine force damage. Uh, this one is, like, blasted away ten feet. Uh, and takes a hefty amount of damage. Uh, they seem to have taken a uh, heavy hit to their torso. Their armor is, like, dented by the force, and shadows are still, like, spilling off of them. <clears throat> what was that? Okay. Uh, anything else from you, Boomcrash? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> Alright. Uh, the war wagon carrying, uh, the captain kind of starts heading this way. I'm gonna delete this dead guy. He's in the way. Uh, Run him over starts heading down here um, and it's gonna like form a defensive area here uh, the hobgoblin is going to turn the ballista uh, this time towards um, either Mortimer or Zumasu let's roll for threat okay it's going towards Zumasu and this is why I have this ballista in the top corner so I can mm -hmm. click on it and if we ever get control of it, we can click on it. You certainly can. Uh, a bolt comes soaring towards you, uh, Zumasu, and a hey. 20 doesn't hit you, right? Yeah, I flick it with my shield. Yeah, uh, your shield is basically what saved you. Uh, a gigantic bolt just soars through the air. And you, like, uh, hold your shield with two hands and, like, deflect it off uh, to the side. It lands in the sand and, like, cracks a rock in two. 
Um, yeah, it rolled low damage, uh, thankfully, but it could have been worse. Um, then the hobgoblin uh, is going to chop at the reins. Go get him, boy! And then the hyena starts running. Wait, the hyena is no longer attached to the uh, the wagon? Nope, they just let the wagon sit there. Uh, I just need to double check it's... Oh yeah, it, it's got a lot of movement speed. It's going to make it all the way to Oman, and it's going to uh, attack the riding horse. It's just attacking the biggest thing. Uh, and that's going to hit the horse for 7 damage. The hyena doesn't have multiple attacks. No, it does not. Okay. This hyena is going to move as a second war wagon that you can hear starts moving around. And that's going to end that's turn. Pran! Uh, a little flabbergasted, I guess. Uh, <laughs> they pull out their short sword, uh, ready for the attack, and start going in. Uh, he's actually going to leap off his horse, seeing what happened to the last one, and he's going to go for the uh, large hyena there. Whips out the short sword, and... Okay, cool. Uh, the sword glows with energy, um, and he swipes uh, at the hyena, landing a good attack. And he takes advantage of uh, Amon being near it to actually land a sneak attack. Uh, he gets 28 damage on this, being, this beast, uh, cutting out at its underbelly. Ah, take that! And then he, like, engages this other knoll over here. Uh, and then he's gonna... Uh, does he have a second attack? Yes, he does. Uh, the second one doesn't get sneak attack, because it's only once a turn. He's gonna attack this other knoll. And get a hit, uh, for just six piercing. Okay. Another one of the fast knolls. Uh... Actually, can he make it without doing that? Yeah, he can make it without doing that. Uh, the knoll rushes towards Mao uh, and leaps over the ridge to attack. Uh, I don't know why it says short sword. It's because he has a short sword. I've just mislabeled it. Got it. Um, okay, so that misses you. And he's going to end his turn. We're going to remove that. Doesn't need to go. And... The final dude. The hobgoblin that got yelled at. Let's see. They're going to start running. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, he is going to use his longbow to fire at Tethys. And miss. Uh, he gets a second attack, though. And misses. Oh, that's good. Uh, okay, then he's going to uh, howl up at the sky uh, and then start praising Yunogu once again, uh, and then shout, GET em, BOYS! And uh, all of the gnolls within 30 feet of him are going to use their reaction to attack uh, the nearest target. Oof. So, this dude's gonna attack Mao. Yeah. Oops, yeah, these are all mislabeled. Oh well. Uh, A16, does that hit you? Okay, you take, uh, three piercing damage. Oh, I see what the problem is. They don't have multi-attack. That's why they're all mislabeled. Fixing this for me. Okay, cool. Uh, and then he... One of the other ones is going to attack Tethys with a claw. 
doesn't hit. Uh, these guys are rolling pretty low. Zumasu, it's finally your turn. Okay. I'm still on my horse, technically. He, uh, yeah. Z Mortimer never went down. Um, but there's enemies literally next to me. Yep. Uh, can I have Mortimer yeah, try and stop cool. that thing real quick? Can you what? Can I have Mortimer kick that thing in front of me? Yeah, you can. Mortimer can attack. Okay, Mortimer wants to kick that thing first. I think you should be able to control it. Can you uh, click uh, let on me it? Let me see. Okay, yeah, it does. I don't bite? know. It's, a, it's attack, it's bite. Yeah. What's yeah, the bite? Yeah, it's a, it's a freaking lizard. Uh, that does not hit. Uh, these flesh gnars are pretty heavily armored. Each of them's wielding a shield and a short sword. Okay. So I'm going to just tell him, good try, and I'm going to jump off of Mortimer and t um, attack this guy instead, so I'll get between the rest of those and him. Okay. Um, bonus action, I'm going to cast uh, Shield on myself. Okay. You cast Shield upon yourself. Meh. That works. That okay. Uh, yes, that does hit. Achoo. Right. 11 slashing damage. Achoo. And an additional one. Donk. Uh, they are bloodied. You uh, instinctively get a pretty good blow in. There's a crackle of electricity from your latent uh, divine smiting, naturally smiting sword. Uh, you do have a second attack. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think of some things. Would you let me try a grapple attempt and if I succeed, pull the guy forward away from them? I mean, yeah, that's uh, called a shove attempt. Okay. Yeah. Certainly try. That is an athletics check. Well, I was... Mostly I was thinking of... Oh, if I just take him with me? Because I was thinking of just grappling him and then moving, because I haven't really moved. Oh. And you can do half speed. Yeah, it's half speed. Okay. Good <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, you grab onto this knoll as it, like, uh, backs up from the sudden blow to its chest. Uh, you reach out and grapple it and, like, spin it around, uh, and you start dragging it. Uh, where do you want to go? Just, uh, move yourself. I just want to get over here so I pull the action away from the horses, and I just kind of want to just, um, make a big old sort of scene of it and just, like, be like, Have that thing! You curs want to fight? I'll bring it to you! Just kind of, like, intimidate and draw attention. Okay. Uh, the gnolls start, like, yelling and whooping, uh, in, in excitement, really, uh, at the thought of killing, uh, a paladin. Also, you're not quite centered there. It was, it was on the, okay. the circle thing around you. Um, oh, okay. Okay, is that it for you? Yep, I only got two attacks. Okay, this dude is moving as a group. This dude, finally take a turn. They pick up their uh, weapons. Actually, they don't have weapons. Uh, he just gets on all fours and starts like uh, running towards Tethys, and he's going to multi-attack. Three attacks, one bite, two claws. Okay, uh, no hits. <laughs> Tethys uh, is just sitting there with two really powerful gnolls near him. Uh, and he is just deflecting a lot of their blows with his maul. Um, his cloak is, like, billowing in the breeze. He's honestly the, uh, the spirit of Kaifun over here. Uh, his, like, cloak kind of comes off, and you see, like, a cape billowing behind him that's, like, purple, and it shows the symbol of Kaifun on his back. Um, it's just sort of badass. Hey, there's Goose! Let me see if I can... Nope, oh. I can, I can just pull that thing over. Um... <laughs> Okay, well, damn it. Oh, I shouldn't have <laughs> deleted it. Because that's going to mess things up, I think. Um, well, I'm going to delete Goose. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just delete Goose. Okay. Uh, this guy is moving as part of the group. So I'm going to delete them. Okay, Mal. At the top of the round, uh, the wind starts to pick up. Do, do, do. <sighs> And the sand starts billowing uh, over you guys as the wind changes direction. Uh, sight becomes almost impossible. Uh, your good eyesight is reduced to about 10 feet. So you can kind of only engage people in melee uh, without being blinded. Uh, ranged attacks are treated as you're being blinded. So what you're saying is that I could take like a 10 foot step back and be hidden? 
Uh, from hiding? If you get 15 feet away, yeah. Sorry, 15 feet. Yeah, but then you'd have disadvantage on ranged attacks, yes. I mean, you could always just hop back. Could hop back and forth, but that's attack of opportunity as well. Mm hmm. Hi! Nice. Stab the knoll. Okay. Uh, you drop Cinder Smite and whip out your uh, rapier. Scimitar, sorry. Uh, I'm on the wrong layer, I'm on the map layer. Also, my AC 17, um, just as a heads up. Oh, okay. For some reason, my character sheet said 14. I was like, there's no way. Okay. So I did some math. Sure, it might just not have been applying armor properly. Uh, okay, that is definitely going to hit. Uh, the horse is not really threatening it. The horses were not made for combat. Um, but that's definitely 13 slashing. Plus one for necrotic. Plus one necrotic. And then I will disengage. Okay, uh, you swipe at the knoll who like uh, gets a cut across his face that starts bleeding horribly. Uh, and then you tumble away from the hobgoblins as they both swipe at you, and you uh, scramble off into the uh, sandy mists. Anything else for you? No. Okay, it's this guy's turn. Uh, it puts its nose to the sky. <laughs> there, there he is, and rushes towards Zumasu. Uh, Zumasu, a knoll leaps out uh, and starts going on a freaking town to you. It still misses. I hold his friend up to him, and he just barely scratches me. Uh, does the 22 hit with the shield spell? Nope. Okay. Because I was at 21 plus 2. Okay, yeah, uh, he starts, like, going to town at you, but your divine shield, your normal shield, uh, and the gnaw in your, the knoll in your hands, uh, you're able to easily deflect most of his blows. And it's this guy's turn, which means that it's officially this group's turn. Uh... They are going to uh, move as a formation. Uh, they're going to group up, and uh, you hear them talking in goblinoid, and they kind of move away from Mao. One, two, three. Uh, no, four. They move into uh, more where Zumasu and Pran are. Uh, and get into the thick of combat. Um, one is going to uh, engage Tethys, one is going to engage Pran, and one is going to, like, get past the horse and engage Zumasu. The horse just kind of, like, uh, gets spooked. It's, again, a, not a war horse. They are not trained for combat. Uh, and then they're going to start attacking. Mortimer, lead the horses to safety. One's going to attack Tethys. Ooh, yeah. Okay. The first hit on Tethys, uh, as he's going to town, he doesn't see it from the back, but a hobgoblin uh, goes in from behind, and technically one of his allies is nearby, so this is going to be a lot of dice. Jeez, he got double advantage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess Tethys was asking for it after missing, like, a million hits on him. Uh, that's going to be 23 damage. Uh... As Tethys is deflecting all of these savage gnolls, uh, a weak hobgoblin goes up from behind and stabs him in the back. Uh, oh! And meanwhile, one's going to go for Pran. Uh, nope, it's a longsword, sorry. And then another one's going to go for Zumasu. Uh, okay, the one for Pran is going to hit. And what is that, nine slashing damage? Um... Pran uh, starts kind of like yelling, and he like backpedals into the sand a bit, uh, and he's gonna take only half damage from this uh, as he enters a rage. Wait, is he a rogue barbarian? He's kind of Conan, yeah. That's, good. That's rad. Okay, <laughs> uh, it is. Like, he got a sneak attack, and now he's going into rage. <laughs> uh, it is this Hobgoblin's turn. Uh, they are no longer on the, uh, they're no longer able to move their cabin, or their, uh, war wagon, uh, and he has disadvantage on the ballista. He starts aiming, uh, but then he kind of holds his action. The captain leaps off and starts trudging into the battle. And he's gonna engage Tethys. Uh, with their great sword. 
That is a javelin. Why is everything mislabeled lately? Because it doesn't have multi-attack. Sorry. I'm gonna fix this for my future reference. Okay, cool. Now it should roll correctly. There it is. Okay, it's a miss anyway. Uh, reaches out with his greatsword, and uh, nothing is going to hit. Meanwhile, do do do. Uh, he begins barking orders at the other hobgoblins uh, that he can see within range. He can't see too many right now. Um, but it looks like the hobgoblins... Uh, is it just hobgoblins? Nope, it's not just hobgoblins. Uh, so the gnolls, if they choose to listen, are going to take these commands too. Uh, he begins barking orders at all of them. Meanwhile, the spellcaster hobgoblin starts uh, heading towards the wagon and like backs up behind it. Uh, what can they do? They can't really do much right now. Not without causing a lot. Well, they could do that. They're going to try and make a perception check to try and perceive, uh, at the very least, um, somebody. Because if they can get a bead on somebody, they can actually try. They don't have great perception. They don't have great perception. They're going to end their turn, uh, but they're going to ready in action. Alright. Another dude goes to town on the guide. Uh, one of those hit for five slashing. Okay, their formation isn't finally going to move. One, two, three. Okay. They start moving in uh, on Zumasu and straight up start surrounding. Hello. Man, it's uh, getting crowded here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make some longsword attacks. And we'll look at the captain real quick. Uh, okay, so the captain can't actually see anybody right now, so his leadership trait doesn't apply here. Um, and that's no hits. Uh, yeah. Uh, even with the flanking bonus that I give, uh, that none of those are gonna hit. Okay, Tethys. Uh, Tethys is going to probably get some good spell in here, maybe. Do I even have any AoE abilities? Tethys is going to cast Armor of Agathis, uh, and a swirling, uh, like, uh, energy of, like, this purple glow starts surrounding him, uh, and the cold of the depths of space, uh, starts surrounding him, waiting to attack, uh, waiting to repel attackers. Is Armor of Agathis an action? I'm assuming it is. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, so he ends his turn. Oh, uh, he also has another ability. Uh, each creature within five feet of him hears whispers from beyond, and they're going to need to make saving throws. saves here. Uh, looks like the captain saved, uh, and the others are going to use their reactions to apply a leadership bonus, which actually saves a lot of them, except for one of the null fangs. The weaker one is going to take nine psychic damage. Okay, uh, it's this null's turn. It's going to attack Pran. A 16 does not hit Pran. Pran has very good AC. This dude's going to attack Zumasu. A 
Uh, 19 does not hit. 20 doesn't hit either. Um, okay. I'm the tank. You are the tank. I mean, this is straight up. You're absorbing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, about 7 uh, attacks each round, uh, plus 2. So 9. I'm on. It's your turn. <laughs> Alright, it's Spirit Guardian time. I'm gonna upcast it, so it's gonna deal 48 damage uh, uh, per turn. Um, and Necrotic, obviously, because I'm evil. And uh, with the start of the turn, as usual. Okay, I'm gonna be going rather quickly, so if uh, I do forget something, I apologize. Definitely remind me if somebody starts near Aura. I'll hopefully remember it, because of the Aura. Uh, and what's that for? No, is it is it you you highlighted this guy? You keep again. Did I ping him? Is that so? My turn is over. Is that the next guy? You keep on highlighting him. Okay, so that's forty-eight. Oh, uh, does is this visible? I uh, keep on getting a, a, a yellow rectangle. Okay. I have no idea what why. Uh, that's if that's if you hover over him in the initiative, it tells you who's uh who that is. Um. It like puts okay. a rectangle around them, but yes, that is their turn. So they're gonna make okay. a save. Yeah. Uh, it's wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they fail. Good they're gonna take 15 damage. They go down. They die. Uh, I'm gonna delete them from the initiative and also delete their token. Boom crash. It is your turn. Okay. So visibility is crap right yes uh a sandstorm rolls through and you're unable to see much beyond 10 feet okay i'm going to cast shield on myself then um shield is a reaction spell so you will gain a bonus to ac until your next turn but it won't last it's not like zumasu shield of faith that's perfectly okay because i'm using it to trigger arcane ward which oh Remember, you can also do that as a reaction when somebody attacks you. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so you will well, gain that yeah. ward when somebody attacks you and you cast shield. Yeah. God, yeah. Then don't do that. Okay. Um, Get closer so you can see something. Yeah, I guess so. Um, one... Two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna go straight ahead because. Can I see the giant hyena vaguely? Um, yeah, you see a giant form in there, but I'm gonna have you make a perception check to try and get a true beat on it. Whew! Nope. Yeah, it's, uh,. Tough. You can tell that there's a big thing fighting there, but you can't really get a good uh, view of it. You can't tell what's horse and what's not horse. But you can certainly try with disadvantage, I could say. Still gonna try, so Eldritch Blast. Okay, a 16 is gonna hit, so that's gonna deal damage. 9 force damage. I'm just gonna keep on trying to wail on it. Uh, okay, you push it 10 feet away. Um, once again, you have disadvantage, but that does hit. Deals 5 force damage. I thought this was going to kill it, but uh, it does not. Uh, you do have one more hit. Uh, I'm going to give it cover, though, so it has plus 2 AC, because you've pushed it even further beyond your normal range. Okay, still going to try. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you still hit. Uh, you just start lobbing shadow magic uh, their way, and eventually, uh, compounding the attacks, they go down. Uh, the hyena whimpers and crumbles into a heap. Uh, anything else for you, Booncrash? I helped. No, I'm good. Right, it's this one's turn. Uh, this one starts taking the carriage around. Although it doesn't have as much visibility. I'm also going to make this a little nicer looking... I thought I was making it nicer looking. Ugh, groups of objects. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and that hyena's done. Pran's turn. Uh, Pran's going to uh, try and get some of these guys off of Zumasu and take advantage of their sneak attack. Ooh, that's a crit. Uh, I'm going to roll that again. 
Okay, that's more than enough damage to kill this uh, hobgoblin. They go down. Um, well, I did just realize I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. Uh, then he's going to make another attack, this time against this hobgoblin. Why is it important to keep the bodies alive? Uh, in case one of them uh, was in the initiative order, because only one of them is keeping track of the, the oh. group initiative. Uh, that's actually not going to hit this guy. Uh, just shy. Okay, uh, it is this Knoll's turn. This one uh, heads off and starts sniffing the air <laughs> and rushes towards Mao. Uh, it is going to... about its sword. And, yeah, it misses. This guy's turn. Uh, this guy is going to rush over here. Uh, it starts uh, yelling back at the hobgoblin. Just let my guys turn loose! We'll rip these things apart! No, we need them! They must be taken prisoner! <sighs> it just snarls back at the hobgoblin. And then it's going to see if its its own leadership thing recharges. It does not. Uh, okay. Okay. So it cannot incite a rampage this turn. But it is going to take its longbow and uh, ready an, an attack for later. Zumasu, it is your turn. Yay, okay. I'm going to attack with advantage the guy I got grappled. Okay, yep. So I pretty much am just going to slit his throat. You know. Uh, like you yep, that's going to hit. Roll for the bonus damage. That enough? That's close enough. I'll say he goes down. Okay, cool. So I just kind of do that. Body goes limp. I drop to the side. Who's the biggest looking guy? The this the guy. Knoll, or? The knoll is visibly bigger. Knolls are like medium creatures, but they're like they're typically like seven feet tall. Okay, so now I'll just I'll just go for that guy. Yeah, that's that's gonna hit, right? Ah, uh, that will. Sweet. So I'm gonna smite this one, but let me first get regular damage in. Okay, 16. It's not Fiend or Undead, right? Nope. Uh, hmm, actually. Yeah, Ooh. no, they're humanoids. Okay, okay so that was, uh, 28 damage. Nice. Okay, yeah, you, uh, go in for a smite, <laughs> uh, and a crackle of electricity kind of, like, ignites some of the stray sand in the air, <laughs> like, creating a sparkling effect. Uh, the creature is still standing, though. It backs up in pain, uh, and it just snarls back at you. Anything else from you? Nope, that's all my actions. Okay, this one is going to go to town. Man, so many of these guys are going to town, but then none of them have gotten there yet. Um, it's <laughs> gonna be two hits on Tethys. I joke, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> Ooh. And the bite hit this time. Con save. Okay, they succeeded. Uh, so they only take four of that damage. Cool. Uh, Tethys is looking bloodied uh, as these creatures start ganging up on him. However, uh, the... F oh, wait. I actually did that wrong, because he has armor bag of this. Um, how much damage was dealt? Uh, Twelve. So his armor decreases by 12, uh, and then the Fang of Yunogu is going to take 25 damage twice. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. The, as the Fang of Yunogu uh, starts, like, uh, clawing at uh, Tethys and, like, sinks his fangs into him, uh, a explosion of, like, cosmic energy bursts out from him. <laughs> Uh, and he just backpedals, uh, he falls onto the ground in surprise, uh, and starts skidding backward away from him, whimpering in pain. Um, he's far more than bloodied. Okay, Mao, uh, at the start, at the top of the turn, uh, the sandstorm starts to die down once more. Uh, visibility, uh, has continued, and we have a few held actions in this case, uh, before you take your turn. Boo. The Null Pack Lord is going to shoot at Zumasu uh, with their longbow. Only one attack, though, and they miss. Uh, meanwhile, 
this guy is going to fire his ballista that shouldn't have moved, but it did. Uh, they're going to fire their ballista, okay. this time over at Amon. Does an 18 hit you, Amon? Yep. Okay, you take 17 piercing damage as a giant bolt <laughs> clefts into your armor. Which, I don't think you have armor, actually, so it, it just kind of clefts into your shoulder. You manage to deflect some of it and roll with the blow, but it's still a heavy hit. Uh, Concentration check. Oh, yeah. Do that. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you're very good. Um, I'm coming. Okay, at this point, uh, let's do some cooler. Eh. 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 We're just gonna do another fireball. Uh, he launches a fireball, like, right here, in the middle of you guys. Um, interestingly enough, uh, a Hobgoblin Devastator is trained to not hit their comrades with their evocation spells. Damn it, he's a spell shaper or whatever. <laughs> yep, the fireball, like, warps around the Hobgoblins and just incinerates the rest of you guys. Uh, that's gonna pretty much hit all of you, except for Mao. Uh, so, make some checks. I'm gonna roll for the horses as well. Brian is close enough to me for the bonus. Yep. The horse is close enough to me for the bonus. Yep, they That's are. About it. So this is for the horse. Um, I'll do it for the other two horses. I lost. Okay, uh, the horse near Zumasu actually got a natural 20. I'm gonna say that it avoided the damage somehow. <laughs> um, and... It jumped up in the air. <laughs> horse says nay. The horse says nay. Uh, oh, Mortimer <laughs> needs to make another save as well. Fuck. Do that. I didn't even think about that. I made the noise and I was just like, the horse says nay? Oh, it's a joke. <laughs> a nay joke? Uh, okay, and Pran is the last dude. It just doesn't hit Tethys because it's a little beyond that. He was trying to get more of you guys in. Uh, okay, Pran actually succeeds, and he's going to take no damage. Uh, he just skids out of the way. Uh, he kind of uses a hobgoblin to block his uh, his own blow. Uh, okay, so the rest of you, let's do some damage. 28. That is perfectly average. Uh, so, the DC... I'm just going to tell you the DC instead of trying to figure it out. Um, the DC uh, is only 13. Yeah. I still failed, even with my... Yeah, I got, a, I got a 5, yeah. I failed I it. Failed. But, uh, I, I kept the spell going, so there's okay. that. Okay, that's good. Uh, so the rest of you take 28 damage. Uh, this horse doesn't take anything. Uh, the other horses are down again. And this time Mortimer is also down. Because Mortimer failed their save. Mortimer goes poof? Uh, oh yeah, Mortimer does go poof when they go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mel. Yet? Yeah. Okay. You can go. Sorry, everybody was holding their actions because of the the sandstorm. <sighs> oh, hey, stab. Oops. Just smash my glass into the microphone. That is gonna hit. And no sneak attack, but that is. This is one of the odd circumstances. Um, he is at one hit point, and he will get a turn before he dies. I am going to disengage. Okay. Can I jump over the ridge? Yeah, that one's uh, just going to be an extra five feet of movement. I'm just going to do... Um... Fuck, I don't... You already have a bonus action and an action, so you mostly just have an item interaction left. So, I can move on top of it, that's about it. Uh, yeah. You can also pick up Cinder Smite, which was dropped here, I think. Dropped right there. So, I'll grab that as I as I run past. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Mao is done. End my turn! Okay, it's this dude's turn. Now we have some visibility. 
Ooh, uh, okay, two of those are 20s. Uh, he's going to add a d4 to one of those, to the bite. Uh, okay, does a 23 hit Yuzumasu? That's a new AC. <laughs> okay, you take eight piercing damage. You are immune to the poison, though. Uh, and then the other one doesn't hit. Uh, but yeah, he's taking leadership from the Hobgoblin Captain uh, and adding a d4 to his attack. Okay, this dude's turn, which I believe includes this dude as well. Um, yeah, I think that's just those two. Uh, he's gonna attack Pran, then attack Tethys. The one towards Tethys, they're gonna add a d4. And they still don't hit Tethys, that's good. Uh, the other one towards Pran did not hit. Okay, it's the guy with the ballista again. Uh, he readies the mounted ballista and turns it, uh, this time towards Booncrash, and is going to fire it immediately. Okay, does an 18 hit you, Booncrash? Can I use a reaction to cast shield? <laughs> uh, you certainly can. Um... Okay, so I get a plus five to AC, and nope, it doesn't hit me. <laughs> okay, uh, you see a gigantic siege bolt heading towards you, and uh, yeah, you deflect it uh, using your newfound abjuration prowess, uh, and kind of like Akito it to the side, uh, using your telekinetic shadowy powers to augment your new wizarding ones, uh, and you gain your new little abjuration power. Uh, I also didn't realize you went abjuration in, in the mage tree. Uh, it's neat. Yeah. Following, following somebody away. in particular. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> it was not lost on me. Uh, okay, it's the hobgoblin's uh, turn. They are going to attack Tethys, because why not? Uh, he cannot benefit from his own thing but he does have plus one for flanking, so that does end up hitting. Uh, and he's going to add his martial advantage, which is stronger, but what is it? It's 3d6. Okay. Okay, that's 20 damage to Tethys. Uh, but that's actually only seven. And... Armor of Agathus is now gone, uh, and the Hobgoblin Captain is going to take 25 straight up damage. <sighs> Get him! He's weak now! Uh, he shouts at the rest of his allies. The Devastator, uh, the Hobgoblin Mage, uh, takes their iron rod and uh, is going to look over on the ridge where Mao is. Uh, they think they've done enough damage uh, out in the front, and they're going to. Why not? Let's do a Scorching Ray, uh, shooting three uh, magical bolts over at Mao. Where's it? I'm just going to use the fi its own Firebolt for this, but ignore the damage. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's two hits, one of which is a crit. Uh, so uh -huh. we're going to do a total of 6d6. It's kind of like all of them hit. Huh. Also, don't forget. Don't. I'm resistant to fire. Okay. Yes. Uh, are you using your reaction, perhaps, on the crit one? Can I catch one of them? No. Uh, yeah. These are straight up fire. But I like fine. That's <laughs> fine. You can grab the fire, but your hand's just going to go through it. Ah! No, I'll use an uncanny dodge. Okay, well, this is the not uncanny dodge one. It's snake eyes. Uh, you take two. <laughs> one, sorry, fire damage. Uh, here's the crit. Uh, 17. So that's 18 halved to 9, which is halved to 5. So you take 5 damage from the critical hit. You just kind of, like, uh, cross your arms in front of you and just... <laughs> You resist uh, the heck out of this fire damage. Uh, the Hobgoblin Devastator snarls at you and backs up behind the war wagon. Uh, it's this dude's turn. It's going to rampage onto Tethys. Uh, that's going to be one hit. None of those can... Oh, actually they might hit. They're going to add a d4 to one of those nines. 
Okay, it doesn't hit. Uh, but Tethys otherwise takes seven slashing. Hobgoblin's turn, which is this group. Uh, they are all going to attack Zumasu. Sorry, what? They're all going to attack you, Zumasu. Uh, so... You tank boy, they slap. One of Wait, them... I've... What? Does they, do they have advantage? Because if they don't, I'm fine. No, they uh, don't have advantage. They just have plus one. Okay, so then I'm fine. Uh, well, not necessarily. Oh, wait, plus one? They they are adding plus one, so one of those is a twenty-three. Okay, that hits. They also can add a d4, but none of them got high enough to matter. Uh, so that hit is going to be five slashing. Okay. Meanwhile, another one is going to like back up onto this ridge, uh, and shoot their longbow at you. Get a little vantage point. Oh, and they'll add a d4. Okay, that's another hit for five piercing. Rude. And Tethys' turn. Uh, instead of casting another spell, uh, he's going to have to risk actually doing some damage. Well, I think it's best if he does his own Eldritch Blast. Uh, that's a ranged attack in Marshall. Okay, actually, uh, he does have his aura ability keep forgetting about that. So we're going to do some wisdom saves. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of failed saves from the looks of it. So they're all going to take 3d6 damage. Psychic variety. This is going to open up some options. Uh, this hobgoblin dies. Blip. Okay. Uh, Tethys is going to take that disadvantage, I think, and uh, shoot an Eldritch Blast at. Uh, most of these guys. Miss. Try again. That one's gonna hit and deal uh, enough damage to kill this dude. And then he's gonna shoot another one, this time at the other knoll that has three attacks. And hit for one force damage. Yeah, he didn't take the uh, good invocation. <laughs> okay, uh, it's this thing's turn. This thing's going to rush into Amon's aura, uh, not caring about the effects, probably to his peril. Mm, yep, probably yeah, to his peril. Yeah. Uh, it was his peril. He dies instantly. Uh, he just kind of starts rushing in, but the shadows start just battering him to death. Uh, Amon, it is your turn. Okay. All right. So, uh, my horse is down. Um, eh, all right, all right, all right. So I think I'm going to have to do the uh, healing, mass healing word again. I'm going to upcast it. So it's going to be... 2d4 plus 4 uh, no that's wrong uh, let me just do it again yeah you can do a mass roll or just add them. yeah Ooh, that is okay a... okay I guess okay so six hit points for the, uh, the each of the horses uh, Zumasu uh, Tethys uh, boom crash and then Mao Okay. Six, six hit points each, and then the, um, the horses actually get max because uh, they were brought from zero. Right, right. I keep forgetting that about you. Sometimes. Yeah. I guess I forget I for horses. I don't forget I'm, for people. I'm not a horse vet, so I forget that too. Okay. I'll get the X's off of them, and then you can continue with your turn. Too bad right. Mortimer disappeared. Yeah. In that case, I gotta do uh, total dead onto this guy. 
Okay, you uh, seek out the one that was barking orders. He is wearing a big banner on his back, uh, and you target him with a wisdom save. Okay, uh, he fails. He takes 19 damage. Uh, you kind of just point at him, the bell tolls for you. And then uh, he kind of clutches his head, uh, and he, he like tosses his helmet off onto the ground uh, as his head starts melting away, and he just screams. <laughs> and eventually he falls down, dead as a doornail. Damn, nice. he's a squishy mage. Uh, well, he wasn't a mage, he was the captain, but he took oh. 25 straight-up damage from Tethys, because Tethys has oh. a level 5 armor of Agathys on him at the time. Uh, so that was a large portion of it, uh, but he did go down. Um, if Amon is done, then it is Booncrash's turn. The sand is gone, and you can see clearly now. Oh, whoops, shit. I didn't mean to move that horse. It's okay, um, it's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Stay where I'm at, and actually I'm going to move between the horsies, and just keep doing the Eldritch Blast and unloading, so I'm going to go after that dude. Flesh Gnar up in the background? Yep. Okay. Um, that one is definitely going to get hit. He was already bleeding out, thanks to uh, Mao's ability, but you oh. finish him off. Yeah. I he just, dies. I wanted to knock everything off and clean up. That's fine. Um, so... You have um, two more blasts. Yeah. The I'm hobgoblins seem to be the squishiest, but also hardest to hit. Yeah. And, and some of them, if you're trying to shoot others beyond others, then they're going to have cover. Yeah, so I guess I'm just going to go after the hobgoblins then. Okay. That one I'm assuming is going to miss. It does. Okay. And again. Another miss. Another miss. Uh, yeah, these guys, uh, the armor, it's just skidding off of their armor. Uh, but right now, it seems like they're getting uh, harassed by uh, Amon's things, so their time might be up soon anyway. Anything else for you, Booncrash? Any movement? Um, More movement? I'm gonna move so I have a better view. Mm. But I'm trying to figure out where. You're estimating that the uh, sandstorm might be picking up again soon. Shit. So, hmm. Um, is this thing? You can like... climb over that. It just takes uh, difficult terrain. Okay. I I'm just gonna move up closer to that then, because I want to go after the giant hyena. Okay. Uh. Coincidentally, it's its turn. Uh, I also accidentally deleted this guy from the initiative, so he's gonna go now. Um, he takes uh, his ballista and sees you like climbing over the ridge. He like uh, makes a like split decision uh, and turns towards you to attack. Ah, squishy mage! Ah, twenty-three piercing damage. Shit! Shit! You do have a reaction if you want to cast shield again, but I don't know if that helps this time. Um, oh, I was going to do, um, the dodge thing. The entropic ward? Wait, yeah, that because... Would, that would just give him disadvantage. Yeah. And shield, it's good, but it's not good enough, so I'll just take the 23, it's fine. Okay, uh, as you're climbing over the ridge, uh, and readying another spell, a siege bolt... <laughs> collapses, uh, like, into your side. Just, uh... Ow. You manage to dodge some of the blow, but it still drew blood. Um, the hyena, uh, is going to, I think, move this guy... Uh, no, I think it's, it's just gonna get, uh, cut loose. He's gonna cut this guy loose, and it's going to climb up the ridge towards Booncrash. Everybody's kind of crowding in on Zimasu. Uh, and it misses. Pran! It's Pran's turn. Uh, Pran is going to attack the nearest Hobgoblin. And that is going to miss. I uh, guess it's time to... Five foot step this way. He's going to risk an attack. 
give him just I give whoever's attacking him disadvantage. Wait, can I? No, uh, not exactly. But uh, yeah. he didn't hit anyway. Pran's gonna then attack the hobgoblin near Zimosu so we can get some sweet, sweet. Didn't hit. Wow, uh, that sucks. Okay, it's this thing's turn. Uh, let's see if he recharged. Not recharge. Okay. Uh, with the hobgoblin captain gone, uh, this one shouts, Glory for the Beast Lord! Everyone, tear him apart! Uh, and is just going to rush over um, towards Tethys and start attacking. Uh, he pulls out a glaive that he kind of had on his back. Ooh. I'm gonna roll that again to get the crit. Okay, 19 damage to Tethys. Uh, and he has multi-attack. Uh, he's going to take his glaive and spin it around to attack Zumasu over the Hobgoblin's shoulder. Nice he, try, buddy. Yeah. Uh, shouldn't have tried for over the shoulder. Zumasu, it is your turn. Um, I'm going to try finishing off the one that's in front of me. I'm also going to say this riding horse is... Uh, it's, it's had enough. Uh, it's leaving. <laughs> Uh, which one were you attacking? The null? Yeah. Yep, that, that does hit. Sorry. Oh, sorry. One second. So um, minus okay. 15. Okay, he's starting to get a bit injured. Six okay. radiant, not great, but it's lowering their hit points, which is better than nothing. You have one more attack. Yeah. Just kind of CC is death. Uh, against the mm, that null? Hit. No, that doesn't hit. Although this guy has slightly less armor, that still doesn't hit. Alright, that's, uh... You know what, I'm gonna try and take some attack of opportunities. So where is he? Who? Pran's, all, Pran's surrounded. I'll, I'll try and get over here at least. Okay, uh, Tethys is uh, up there. You start heading towards Tethys. Um, and that's gonna provoke three attacks of opportunity, which they will all gladly take. Ooh. Turns out their crit is actually the, the amount to hit your AC. Uh, <laughs> okay, oh. so that's one hit? Yep, that is one hit, and I need to reroll for the damage, actually. Uh, so that's nine damage. Okay. Take a little hit to the back as you rush up there uh, to reposition yourself. Um, you see that there is a one-eyed uh, Knoll leader there that looks bigger and buffer than the rest, wielding the glaive. <sighs> Face me! Face me in combat. It just snarls at you. Um, sure. All right, if that's it with your turn, the top of the round happens, and I don't know what that roll was. Okay, uh, the sandstorm starts to pick up again, and Mal, you have the turn. I'm going to bonus action hide, and then use the cover of the sandstorm to run around to get to the hobgoblin. You'll have to be more specific. The hobgoblin over on the wagon. Okay. Yeah, you're you're very well hidden. The hobgoblin is like uh, twisting the ballista around on its like mount. <sighs> Can't get a beat. Uh, and Mao, you have snuck up sneakily stealthily behind the war wagon. Uh, you grip up uh, onto the side of the wagon. It feels like the tilt a bit, uh, but then it, before it's too late, uh, or suddenly it is too late, as you reach up and Assassin's Creed style pull him off the war wagon and onto the ground, and then you sink your scimitar into him, uh, and he dies instantly. Hell yeah. My wagon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10, 15, 20. I know that there was at least two here, so I'm going to try and find the other one. Um, so I'll use the last bit of my movement to get closer. Yeah, you saw it go and behind the fall. war wagon, and you see him there. Uh, make a new stealth check, just because you had to like do an attack. It was fairly quiet, but I want to see if you can pull it off. Okay, yeah, you pulled it off. 
uh, you crawl slowly along the war wagon. You see the uh, the mage. They seem to be like uh, spinning their sorceress power, readying a spell for when the sandstorm leaves. And they're like looking uh, around the corner. They have not noticed you on the war wagon. All right. If that's the end of your turn, uh, yep. is this dude's turn? It's going to leap after Zumasu. And that kind of just barely enters the area for Amon, so I'm going to say it gets a wisdom save, but it's going to be like advantage, just because it's only barely touching it. Uh, it still fails, so roll for that damage. All right. 16. Uh, that's how many hit points it had. Uh, as it's sneaking up on Zumasu, uh, a necrotic thing like rips apart uh, a hole in its face and zoom also you just kind of like uh, trip it and it like falls into the spirit guardians and then is annihilated hey, uh, cut it out there guy or you don't touch the blender okay it's technically not his turn because it advanced it after I deleted it it's this guy's turn so he's gonna need to make a save as well as this oh he's dead didn't even see that. Uh, does a 16 succeed? Mm, yeah. Okay, so he's take half. Uh, which is good, because he would have died if he didn't. Uh, he's at one hit point. Um, okay, he's going to be smart enough to get out of this space. Uh, he can't move very far, uh, but he can uh, get around where Pran is. And make an attack. Uh, that misses Pran. It is the Devastator's turn. I'm going to remove the Hobgoblin Captain. Okay. Uh, the Devastator uh, is definitely going to ready their action, though they are going to try a perception check. Probably going to fail, because I don't think it can beat a 32. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, Mao is completely unseen. It is going to like uh, peek out from behind here and uh, start preparing a spell. Its uh, hands start crackling with energy that it's like channeling through its uh, iron pole. And he readies his action. This guy is going to go to town once again. The city of going to Townsville. Uh, that's a crit on Tethys. We'll Reroll that damage. 12 damage to Tethys. Uh, a 24 is going to hit Tethys as well for 5 plus 4. He's going to need to make a con save. Uh, you wanted to protect Tethys, right, Zimasu? Yeah. Are you applying any things to these? Disadvantage to 1. Okay. Uh, cool. Which you, one has poison? Uh, you, you applied it to, uh, the bite if it's the one that has poison. Uh, okay. So that actually does end up missing, even with... Well, it's technically not flanking. Okay. Uh, Tethys does take just barely an additional 12 damage. Tethys is now at 2 hit points. Um, he has taken a lot of uh, hits from these gnolls. Uh, he's looking very scratched up. His armor, uh, his mage armor is starting to like fizzle. Um, and... It's this guy's turn, which represents the Hobgoblin gang. He's going to shoot at Zumasu. And miss, horrifically. Yay! Uh, this guy's going to rush in towards Zumasu, and we're going to make two longsword attacks. And... Uh, no, th those are not going to hit. This guy is also on the edge, so he's going to make an advantage wisdom check. And he does succeed. Uh, I'm on deal half damage to this dude. Well, Sick of this dude. Okay, so... 11. Since we round up in this universe, uh, that guy dies. So... Oh yeah. Once again, uh, Zumasu trips another dude and uh, kind of kicks him into the Spirit Guardians. Um, oh, uh, I do need to make one more attack against Pran. Shit. Okay. Uh, Pran does not get hit. Yay. Okay, now it's Tethys' turn. Uh, Tethys 
does have a spell slot left. Um, I think it's probably best to do that. I think it's best to just do another armor of Agathus and then hope to rust, uh, rest later. Uh, he reforms his armor, uh, shouting up to the heavens, Kaifon, guide me through this time! I follow your trail into the ends of the cosmos! And uh, stars start swirling around him. His armor is replenished. Amon, it is your turn. Alright. Uh, Tephus is not down? One hit point? Uh, he is at two hit points, but has 25 temporary uh, HP. Yeah, the boy will be fine, then. Yeah, it really okay. helped him last time. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm gonna get uh, closer. And... He moves the death uh, orb. Okay. I think I'm gonna cast the uh, insect swarm. Actually, let's not do that. Uh, let's do... I was excited. Uh, That's a concentration yeah. spell. Yeah. Uh, so, let's do... Um, light. Onto this one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just just roll for damage. I will. Uh, let me just... 58. There's okay. a chance that he won't be able to survive even if he saves, so... Yeah. Oh. Actually, there is a chance he can survive if he saves. <laughs> Okay, fine, I'll make a check. Constitution, please. Rip brownie. Okay, yeah, he failed. Rip um, <laughs> he's, uh... Oh! Actually, hold on. Um, we I actually... Rip you actually don't have sight of him. Oh, because of the sandstorm. Yeah, I totally forgot. Thankfully, okay, okay. this guy didn't uh, hit with his longbow. Uh, ten feet, right? Ten foot range, yes. Uh, can I see the... Can I see the, this thing? No, you can see this pack lord dude that's engaging Zimasu though. Yeah, let, okay, let's do that then. Uh, okay, I'll have him do a save. We'll keep the same damage. Okay, he failed, so that's even better. Uh, he's going to take 19 necrotic damage uh, as you start pulling uh, his soul away. Uh, festering boils start covering his body. Clumps of hair start falling out. <laughs> he just... He's just having a bad time. It's not great for him. Amon, is that all for your turn? Yep. Boom, crash. You have limited visibility, but there is a giant hyena in front of you. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Uh, he tumbles down the hill and takes some damage. Minimum takes damage. Fabulous. Five force. I'm gonna say he takes a d6 from falling, because you did get pushed. Uh, so he takes another three. Uh, technically, he's ten feet away. Uh, I will just say that you need to follow up, like, five feet, just to keep sight of him. Okay. I can do that. Otherwise, that is a miss. Mm -hmm. and... Okay, another hit. Okay, that's more like it. Yeah, he gets blasted with some shadowy energy. <laughs> Uh, you can see the darkness, like, shedding off of him as the sand rips into its fur. Uh, it, like, sniffs and, uh, shakes its head, uh, gets back to its feet. Uh, anything else from you, Booncrash? I'm gonna move a little bit further away <laughs> so I can hide in the sandstorm. Okay. Uh, the Hobgoblin is going to aim its ballista, uh, this time over at Pran, uh, but it's not going to shoot until the sandstorm's gone. The hyena leaps up and around. It's able to sniff you out, Boom Crash, and it's gonna try and bite. It misses. Yay! Pran. I like to push the Pran a lot. Let's. Short sword. Oh, nobody's nearby. That's unfortunate. Uh, so no sneak attack. But he can deal eight piercing to this dude. Uh, and then I guess since he's in the he'll he'll uh he'll do a cunning action he does have that ability and provoke some attacks 
exactly. Oh, ooh, one was a crit. Not a great crit, but a crit. Takes eight. Uh, he's going to bonus action hide. Where is it? Stealth. Okay, plus ten. Cool, cool, cool. You can do that. Yeah, he did that. Uh, and then he's going to leap out, attack with advantage. And that just barely hits. Uh, this guy goes down. Whew, got him. It's the Pack Lord's turn. Let's see if he recharges. Man, uh, he really just got one rampage out of these dudes. Uh, but he just kind of shouts, To the death! Uh, and is going to attack you with his glaive. It's a little close combat. Uh, can't really get a good... Uh, attack on you, so then he's going to try and bite. It's the first one. Okay, uh, a 23 does hit you for 7 piercing damage. Kidoki. Uh, no, sorry, oh. Zumasu. Oh. Okay. Did I say Boom Crash? No, no, it's just I am drawing. Well, every, so. Everyone just blanked out for some goddamn reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have been playing my own turn for a while. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of players this this combat. Uh, Wait, Zumasu, you get hit. You get hit for seven. Okay. And he ends. Zumasu, it's your turn. I'm gonna attack the guy who attacked me. That's fair. He is one of the only people that was able to. Uh, I miss. You missed though. He swats again. it away with the haft of his glaive. The second attack though finds purchase. Roll for damage. It's twelve slashing plus. Five plus anything else? Divine yeah, sense one, still? Which one? It was the it was dude. the hobgoblin or the knoll? Okay. It's the knoll. I thought I just did divine sense. No. Doesn't seem to be a fiend still. Uh, okay, and another ten. Uh, after a like uh, shining blast of uh, lightning energy. Um, he is not looking too hot. It looks like uh, he's breathing heavily. He's fighting through uh, just on pure rage. Uh, but one more hit will probably do him in. Is that it for you? Damn it, why won't he go down? Yeah, I'm done. At the top of the round, the sandstorm passes. And we have some ready actions to do. Uh, the ballista is going to shoot at Pran, who has just revealed themselves. So let's do a blister. That doesn't hit. Uh, it lands in the sand nearby. He looks back. Ugh! It almost hit me. Oh, I just realized the Pack Lord is in Amon's aura. So actually, it's going to die. Uh, yeah. It only has three hit points. Um, so Zuma, nice. so your attack would have hit it and killed it. Uh, in this last blow. As he, like, backpedals into the Spirit Guardians, uh, the necrotic energy just bombards him and, like, pulls extra blood out of the wounds, and eventually he just falls to the ground dead. Oh. Can I move, then? Uh, yeah. There's just one guy nearby that would get an attack. Um... We're still, I know, in response mode, but... If you do move, he misses. I'll go over here. Okay. Well, then that doesn't even provoke an attack. Um, that way, Pran, but that would give Pran attack to uh, give Pran's, um, sneak attack against these guys. Uh, it would, as long as you're next to a dude. Um, okay. okay. The Devastator is going to loose a lightning bolt, and that's gonna go right a hundred feet this way, uh, which I believe. Made battle. Made battle. I just want to see the specifics. I think it's a five foot wide. I don't think I can. Oh, the line. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, five foot wide. That doesn't quite get Zumasu, but I can definitely get three people in there. Uh, and it's going to bend around you guys. So Tethys, Amon, and Boom Crash, make some saves. Is a dexterity. Dexterity save? Yes. Tethys has the bonus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Tethys succeeds. 
Uh, boom crash, crit fails, uh, Amon succeeds. So you guys are going to take half damage. What is the damage of a lightning bolt? Okay, it's still 8d6. Cool, cool, cool. Play. Okay, uh, you guys take... For those of you who are taking half damage, that's 16. Uh, Tethys succeeded. So Tethys is going to take 16 to his... I got six. <laughs> yeah. Snipe that guy. Okay, and Tethys was protected just by their armor of Agathys. And now it's finally your turn. Sorry. Yay! Let's go murder this dude. Okay. Uh, you presumably Assassin's Creed uh, leap off of the wagon and go to attack. Yeah, it's fine too. It's cooler. Rule of cool. You leap down onto the mage as they cast a lightning bolt at your allies, and yeah, you got him. Roll for that damage. It is 20... Uh, 27? Yeah, 27. Yeah. Plus one. Plus one next turn. Okay, uh, yeah, you leap down uh, and swipe at his back. <laughs> there was a bit of mage armor, like, protecting him, uh, but it wasn't enough uh, to fully protect from your blow. It looks like he is gravely injured. Anything else for your turn? Do you have a bonus action? Do you have a bonus action? Try and hide again. It's not as cool. <laughs> I wish I could just, like, grapple him. But, no, I think I'm just going to stand in front of him imposing. <laughs> okay. Hit me! You stand Hit in front me. of him imposingly, uh, with no attempt to hide. This hobgoblin dies. Uh, let's not mince words about it. Uh, and it's the Devastator's turn. Uh, Do it. He's gonna turn to you. Uh, he learned a bit, uh, from his past iteration of fire damage against you, and is instead going to, uh, grab at you with his hand and do a shocking grasp. Does a 19 hit you? It does. I have a reaction, too. Oh. Uh, cool. Do it. You, uh, unleash a blast of fire back at him. He's gonna need to make a dex save. Burn, baby, burn. It's going burn up. And he fails, and he takes 16 fire. He's at 1. You shouldn't have done that. Well, either way, uh, Mao, you take 14 lightning damage as he finally finds purchase on you. You also can't take reactions until the start of your next turn. Okay. Uh, and he's going to start limping away. <sighs> just gonna, just like on the ground twitching. <laughs> it's too late for you. Bye. Okay, it's this guy's turn. This guy's going to attack Zumasu. Uh, in the aura. Oh, he's in the aura. Yeah, so he's going to do that. He could very well die. Yeah, uh, and he does, because we round up. Uh, this null dies. So I'm going to just X him. With the sandstorm gone, this guy is going to shoot his oop, long bow. Uh, at Zumasu and Miss. It's Tethys' turn. Uh, Tethys is going to step over these bodies uh, over towards Zumasu and swing his maul at this hobgoblin and hit for 13 uh, damage. This hobgoblin goes down. Looks like most of the creatures are finally starting to go down. Uh, Amon, it is your turn. You see a mage limping away and a hobgoblin perched on a hill and a giant hyena attacking Boomcrash. There's also uh, still the war wagon. Alright, alright, alright. You know what, I guess uh, I better go deal with the giant hy hyena. I think I'm just gonna go here and gonna cast um, hmm Hmm. You know what? Screw it. Punch kick. <laughs> you say screw it, and you say punch kick, and you rush over towards the hyena. Uh, spear. Uh, spear strike. Ooh, 
That's gonna um, hit. Uh, for five piercing. Uh, another yeah. hit for seven piercing. Yeah, but I'm not gonna kick it. As a bonus action, you use your martial arts to go and unarmed strike. That is also gonna hit. Roll for damage. And yeah. five damage. Uh, you're doing some chunks here. Uh, that's 17 total damage. Uh, the hyena is getting pummeled from the side, uh, gets two spear uh, stabs in its side, and then you just swat at its face uh, with a swift kick as it turns to face you. It turns to face you slower and covered in blood now. Uh, anything else for you? Nah, yeah, that'll be it. Boom crash. Um, yeah, um, Eldritch Blast. Okay, you are within five feet, so you do have disadvantage. So that's n oh, actually they have very low AC. That does hit. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, he is like pushed kind of up the hill, and that is also gonna hit. Yep. Uh, he tumbles down the other side of the hill, dead, as a dog. Okay. Um, can I see anybody else? Uh, there's other... this guy. He just okay. has bit partial cover, but he's also higher up. Okay, yeah, that doesn't hit. Okay. Worth a shot. Right. I'm gonna limp behind a horse, and I think that's the rest of my movement. Alright, it is Pran's turn. Uh, Pran is going to pull out a crossbow and point it up towards this dude. As he sees your Eldritch Blast. Blast, not find purchase. And he misses too. Uh, he can only use his crossbow once, so he's going to drop it and then start running this way. He's going to bonus action hide underneath of the cart. He like skids down underneath it. Um, so that's going to be, I know it's plus 10, so. Okay, 18. Ooh. Where'd it go? natural one. Uh, Pran goes down on the other side, leaps up, and uses their short sword with advantage. And that's gonna hit, and more than enough to kill this dude. Ugh. That guy's dead. Zumosu. There's two guys left, one with very low hit points. It looks like they're starting to get the message. We killed all your friends, you're next, I'm gonna say as I just go up to this guy. Okay, you announce that they're gonna die, and they seem to not like that. Uh, however, you don't get a hit this time. Ah, uh, screw it. I will have all the other rest after this. I'm using, um... You know when. I have high ground. Let me try this again. I just needed to use both hands. <laughs> you oh, grasp really, with I both hands shield. and use your justice blade. Did it go? Yep, okay, there, uh, there it is. 24. That will definitely hit. Roll for that damage. 9 damage. Uh, this divine thing is just enough to kill him. Uh, he goes down. Oh, I didn't even need to use the smite? Nope. That's what all she wrote. Okay. Now, the sandstorm picks up, uh, so you might have to like go and do it uh, hand style. But there is only one dude left. Ugh. Can I just, like, overkill with the ballista? Uh, you can't really see them. The sandstorm is now in your way. Though you could hold your action. I will hold my action. Okay. Also, on my turn, the necrotic damage? Uh, I already applied it. Okay, just make it sure. He was technically at two. Ah, faster. Okay. Uh, it's his turn. Can he do anything creative to get out of this situation? No, he can't because he used his last third level spell. He can't do anything creative. Good. Hmm. Good surrender. That is a good choice, probably. Probably has a better chance of living, to be honest. Does he, though? Well, he doesn't know. 
<laughs> he doesn't know what you guys are like. Um, he doesn't think he can get away from you guys. Uh, so he uh, starts just like uh, crawling towards Zumasu. I, I yield. I yield. Drop your weapons. Start stripping. He drops hey. his iron pole, uh, and then he uh, starts doffing what little armor he's wearing. He's I hold up not my hands to the others and be like, "He's surrendering." You if shout over the sandstorm that he is surrendering. Uh, Mal probably can't hear you, but what? <laughs> uh, at this, I'll be like, "Keep stripping," and I'll, I'll, I'll just, I guess, could I just? I know it's not my turn, but would I be able to just like kind of five foot step there, in between me and the others of the party? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, as the turn cycle goes around, um, Tethys, like, kind of comes over and, uh, gets a beat on him. Uh, Pran starts, like, uh, covering his head and coming out of the, uh, war wagon area. Um, meanwhile, uh, what are Amon and Booncrash doing? Uh, the fight is over? It's pretty much over. It's mostly just, uh, Mao has a readied action. Gonna strip his skin, limp over to Amon and take out a healing potion. <laughs> okay. Amon. I think. I think I'm gonna head out north because the horses are. I don't know if the horses are around and that bothers me. Mm. That's fine. Yeah. You... I, this one's yielding and he seems to be not of a threat. We might just let him go under certain conditions. And I kind of look oh. at him. It looks like the uh, horses are rearing back. They are completely frightened. They've been kind of like hanging out, uh, but with the sandstorm finally picking up again, it looks like they might be making a move to run. Uh, Amon, can you make an animal handling check to try and calm sure. them down? God damn it. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, you uh, come towards them and you start going shh, 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 shh. Uh, and you like pull their reins and you start like petting them on their sides uh, and they seem to be getting the hint that the combat is over now in spite of the uh, death spirals like spinning around you all the time um, yeah they, they know better <laughs> they know better uh, meanwhile the sandstorm falls and Mao you do have a ready to action but you see Tethys and Zumasu near the devastator uh, do you wish to act I'm just okay. gonna yell real quick I'm not gonna act and be like what are you doing out of the way! He shoot him. He, we have questions for him. He's the last one alive. I don't think he can do anything. He's I also naked. Just got on this thing. I, I, I'm gonna shoot at the wall. <laughs> okay, you shoot up uh, at the wall. That one's not very tall, but there is a very tall one over, uh, like. I shoot at the wall. Yeah, you shoot at the wall. Uh, a bolt is now sticking out of the wall. Could be a useful way to do climbing or something. Uh, just saying. Hmm. It might be fun. might be uh, a fun little excursion. But that's not really important right now. Um, I got to shoot the thing I'm at. Okay. Uh, you guys, uh, finally, things calm down. Uh, the sandstorm is still raging intermittently throughout this area. Uh, the Hobgoblin Devastator... <clears throat> Uh, finally doffs all of his armor uh, and tosses his, like, mage supplies uh, onto the ground in a heap. Ooh. There. Right. Hey, will you let me leave? We're gonna have to ask you a few questions first, and um, I'm gonna just kind of do a sort of police pat-down type thing to make sure he doesn't have anything hiding. Okay, make an investigation check. Uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to be hiding anything. He seems to know better. He's not gonna try anything uh, quick on you guys. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull out like a pe I'm gonna pull out just like a water skin and a ration and be like, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna tell us all you know about your little buddies. I'm gonna give you these two pieces of food and you're gonna walk out into the desert and hope for the best. <sighs> what do you want to know? You, why do you say you needed us? We. One of our party members heard you say something like that. You're probably a Lawrence. Didn't know if you were important. But the Jaguar wants to keep prisoners. Who's the Jaguar? New leader. Shadowy. 
trying to unite the tribes. Do they... Why would the tribes want to make a war with Alore? I don't know why they want Alorans, but Alorans do control a lot of the Scablands. New Dawn, too. Are you guys fighting against New Dawn as well? Or are you working with New Dawn? No, not working with New Dawn. They attack us on sight, too. But they are forcing us, the Jaguar, forcing us to work with these heathens. He kind of like spits at the gnolls. Hmm. Where does the Jaguar's hideout? Don't know. Disseminates throughout the ranks. Though our ranks are thin. If we unite, it seems that our chances were better of survival. After we lost the fort, we were forced into the Scablands. Can I do an insight check from afar? You can. Uh, I'll do an insight although... check as well. Uh, it's gonna be made at disadvantage for you, Mal. Yeah, because I can't see body language, I'm just listening. Well, it's also just the sandstorm is raging, so he's, like, That's talking cool. kind of loud to get over it, um, but it's still hard to hear. Uh, you can't quite get a That's beat on this guy. He's just kind of shouting over the sandstorm. Uh, Zumasu, you think that, um, but once again, this guy is very, like, one omnidirectional. Or not omni, uh, monodirectional, I guess. Uh, he's, he just has a one-track mind, and he's looking for his own survival at this point. Uh, you think he's telling the truth. He doesn't seem very enthusiastic about their uh, what what their their future plans. He seems pretty pessimistic about the whole thing, especially since they just got their entire band wiped out by a group of adventurers. And I feel kind of bad for this guy, but... I don't. I don't. I'm at 10 HP. <laughs> I'm pissed. Tell your people... They, it's better off if they just stay out of the way of the Lauren New Dawn conflict, or else more of this will probably happen. The Jaguar doesn't know what he's up against. It's, it'd be safer for you guys to, to just stay out of the way. I'll tell my people when I get back. If I get back. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna lead him over to, like, wherever a corner is. A corner? Oh, I like, can lead him. Or I'll do it. So wherever he's gonna, wherever we're gonna send him out from, so I guess the way we came. Uh, okay, yeah. And basically, I'm just gonna heal him a few HPs before he goes, along with giving him the rations. Okay. How much you heal him by? Twenty. Okay. That's, That's a substantial. That's a substantial Are we amount. All letting him live? Is this a thing? He's the last one alive, and if he brings the message, maybe it'll lower the amount of hobgoblins attacking. They'll know who we are. They don't know who we are. We're just a random bunch of adventurers. Mm -hmm. And you look like a snake, and I look like something from hell. So, and, so, so your formation is noticeable, but they might not know exactly who you are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they also have two marns with us, so it's not like it's consistent. Yeah. Also, it's not like you go consistently in disguise anyway. So, like, what do you care? True. All right. Uh, are you guys letting him go? I mean, that seems to be a consensus. So, like, okay, let's ask the guide. What does the guide think? Tethys, uh, kind of just... He, he seems indifferent towards this. Uh, Pran as well just, uh, kind of shrugs their shoulders. I got my fill of killing for today. He's I'm... got no weapons left. Alright, let, let him go. We should have enough time, even if he tries to rally any troops to get far enough ahead. They don't yeah. even know where we're going. Tethys also <laughs> chimes in, uh... Sorry, Iman. Uh, he chimes in saying, um... If... If there's less chance that they'll attack Urzark, it's better to let him go. Uh, sorry, what were you saying, Amon? No, no, I wasn't saying anything. Okay. Yeah, that's fine then. If everyone seems to be, if everyone except for one seems to be under consensus, then I say that's fine. Okay. I'm just throwing it out there. If we all get ambushed by this jaguar, it is not my fault. I take zero... We already got ambushed by this jaguar, so 
Whatever. Yeah, we're already in their territory. But it wasn't intentional. We surprised them by being here. It still didn't matter, so don't worry about it. We'll cross that bridge if it arises. Aha. Uh -huh. I will keep it in the back of my brain and I will worry every second. The, <laughs> the Devastator uh, puts their hand up to their uh, face as the sandstorm kicks up again and he starts heading off, uh, kind of walking past Boom Crash and eyeing them as he goes. Um, he took his spell component punch anyway, I'm assuming if he's stripped. Yeah. He starts heading off and then disappears. Um, the sandstorm is still picking up, uh, and Tethys is like, uh, not looking too hot. Um, but we should take a rest. Maybe we maybe build a quick little shelter here. We bring the wagons around to just have a sit down. We use the wagons, and he points to the the west. That's a that's a big scab over there. We could probably make camp. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Anyone want some spot healing? Who's looking yes. real bad? I, I'm, I'm, I am. I'm Feel in a rough me. shape. I'll give you 20 HP. Thank you. Uh, Anyone else? Tethys is at two hit points. He is requesting I give aid. Tethys 18 HP. Damn, you got a lot. I got 62. Nice. Okay. I'm Genji. Just wiping the healer. <laughs> Eventually his armor of Agathus fades, but he uh, concentrates during uh, your guys' rest um, to replenish his warlock slots. Um, okay, you guys form a uh, sort of... Uh, oh yeah, we can use our hit die, can't we? Yeah, you can. Uh, I am going to say that um, as things happen here, uh, there isn't too much that's going to come after you guys. Um, but there are plenty of bodies that we can loot. There are plenty of could bodies we, you can loot. Um, could we take a long rest? <laughs> you, you, this, uh, you were probably going to take a long rest, is what I'm trying to get oh. at, because uh, dusk was right upon you guys. Okay. When I this thought, I thought it was like, this was like midday, so. I yeah, guess. that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just before dusk, as you guys were um, making in your oh. second half of your day. Okay, then it's time for long rest. Is this the special sort of long rest where we can either get hit dice or spell slots? Uh, no. I'm gonna say it's normal. Okay. I summon my horse again, so I don't have to waste a spell tomorrow. Yep, that's fine. Uh, and you guys, uh, form a barricade with the wagons, uh, and you loot everything thoroughly. Uh, you probably wait until a bit later as the sandstorm, like, dies down. You come out and, like, bury, uh, or unbury some of the hobgoblins and start picking through their stuff. Uh, let's roll for some treasure. Why not? Why does the horse have an aura? I was gonna turn the entire area into darkness with an aura <laughs> of blue. Why? For because the fox of vet. <laughs> I have magic items. I wish to use them. Like a blue gel over the light source. I forget what it's yep. called. Yep. Map bells. You did it. Wait a second. Now it's dusk. I have these boots of climbing. Now, do you have any string? I can set up a trap for a perimeter. I point at the arrow lodged into the wall. I did mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's true. Alright, I want to do something stupid, but I just want an excuse to use the boots. I'm just going to like use the arrow to kind of bake a string trap and attach a little plate or something to it so it'll jingle if somebody passes by it. Okay. Uh, make a sleight of hand check. Okay. I can't tie anything. <laughs> There's yeah, no tension. You try your hand at a bit of uh, engineering, and it doesn't quite go your way. Um, unfortunately, the whole thing you were trying to do is just stymied by all of the um, the sand getting everywhere. Uh, but honestly, if something was going to come at you, it's not like it wouldn't have tripped the bell that was constantly ringing uh, as the wind howled past it anyway. Um, you guys drag the carts over there um, and set up camp. After you guys loot everything, uh, you do gather about 1,400 gold pieces. Nice. And okay. I'm going to have, uh, since Mao mentioned it, I'm going to have Mao make the investigation check. I did one before I was 13. Oh, um, 13. 
Okay, uh, you didn't find anything, like, especially valuable on them. Um, nobody had, like, any, like, magical weapons or anything. However, one of them did have an elixir of health. Um, Booncrash is able to identify this potion, uh, simply enough. Um, if we just, uh, I'm gonna, if we divide the money up evenly, everybody gets 233. And since they actually were kind of helpful in the fight, maybe we should give it some, give it evenly to them. Uh, that seems fair to me. Mm. You, you have one competent one. That was pretty good. All that cool stuff you were doing. Oh, I, I guess um, I'm going to pass Mao the money for her to give to um, Pran as a sort of penance. <laughs> yeah, you, you should give this to them. Fine. Okay, I can't seem to look it up, uh, the Elixir of Health, but I did find it in the DM's guide that I have next to me. Uh, it cures any disease afflicting you, removes the blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poison poisoned conditions. Um, yeah, that's all it does. It's a clear red liquid that has tiny bubbles of light in it, which is nice. neat. Uh, so it's basically like a souped-up Zumasu touch, because it doesn't just cure... Uh, poison and disease. It also gets rid of blindness and paralysis and stuff. Neat. Um, do you want me to hold on to it, or does someone else want it? Um, I vote either you or Amon. Because you guys have technically the most instantaneous mobility. Amon, what you thinking? Do you want it, or should I just put it in the stockpile? Put it in the stockpile for now. Okay. Okay, yeah. you put it in the stockpile. Um, you guys disperse uh, your 20% of wealth in between the two people. Uh, did you guys do the math for that already? Yeah, I did. That's where it was 233 each. I, I just decided to divide it by six evenly. Okay, sounds good. They got they got extra this time because they actually were... 233 gold? Yeah, it's, it's, there's a 0.33 repeating, so I think there's a floating six gold or something like that. Let me see. I'm just going to put it in the Discord chat There's a floating so two gold. <laughs> just put it between them. Okay, yeah, so they get 234. Yep. <laughs> cool. Um, so, uh, you guys hand over uh, their wealth. Uh, Pran kind of, like, just takes it from Mao uh, without saying much of a word. But they, they do seem to accept it. Oh, I just give it to him and walk away. I don't care. Yeah. Probably the most money they've ever seen in a very long time. He hefts it and, like, puts it on his belt loop. Don't spend it all in one place. Then I'll walk away. Uh, I want to talk to them. I want to just talk to them for a little bit. I was going to say that. Um, eventually, the sandstorm dies down, um, and night starts to fall upon you guys. Um... Eventually, you guys, like, make a fire and, uh, summon some food, uh, using your spells. Um, Tethys is, like, uh, kind of intrigued in you guys. That was some good fighting out there. Uh, where you guys hail from? You know, this and that. Kind of more towards the southern area. Uh, technically a lore? <laughs> Pass by there frequently. Kinda new dawn. Mm. Well, it sounds about right. Bunch of weirdos, probably from Alore. Mal looks him up and down, like, speak for yourself. Hey. Do you guys usually have hobgoblin problems? Like... Sometimes. Once the Alorans occupied Urzark, there's been less attacks, but we've been ready in case something happened. We trained for combat pretty early on. So the Marn and the Hobgoblins were never on decent terms? No. The Knolls are a bit new. They're usually further east. I think we're missing the more important... Who the hell is the Jaguar? Is that the name of anybody? I haven't heard of it. So what you're saying is that there's another party who is now pushing themselves into this war? Mobilizing something. Or taking advantage of it, one way or another. Maybe they're... 
I don't know. Ugh. Could be they're being manipulated as well. With any luck, they'll push out the Alorans, and then the Zarks can maybe, uh, maybe get some peace on their own for once. Would New Dawn make a move then? I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but um, your land seems pretty sought after, right? Tethys kind of like looks down, and they have like a bit of Urzark pride, but they shake their heads in disbelief. <sighs> You're probably right. Even if the Alorans left, we'd be exposed. Hobgoblins, New Dawn. I guess that's why we kind of tolerate it. But at least they let us practice. And he uh, kind of pulls out a holy symbol of a uh, purple star. It's kind of like decorated with a amethyst gem at its center. Kaifon will guide us. But Is it their tail waves in different ways sometimes. Is there anything the Alorans could have done to make your their occupation a little more um, palatable? Well, not working us to death, for one thing. This guy probably knows. Looks at Pran, and Pran's just, like, uh, eating some of the food. Ugh. I mean, I go from here and there. I'm from Urzark, but I'm kind of a merc. Well, either way, you must have grown up. Yeah, yeah. The Lawrence have been there for a while. But you get used to it. I make some money as a merc, but it's just fallen on hard times recently. The, uh, the Lawrence don't have much use unless they want to draft you in the army. And that's not something I want. <clears throat> Tethys nods in approval. Hmm. Well, hopefully after this, maybe you guys can pursue something more entertaining. You already got some some extra money, it looks like. Even though this was completely unexpected, this encounter. <clears throat> Actually. And uh, Pran hands uh, 25 gold to... Uh, sorry, 10 gold to Amon. Um, this will pay for the horse. The rental. Aww. Don't, worry. Don't worry about it. I, I, uh, I'm the one that hired you. And... Uh, Frankly, uh, it's petty. Let's not worry about such things. Kind of frowns and takes it back. I'll take it. <laughs> I got to smack you in the horn. Uh -huh. Fuck, what? He would. Whatever. Money's money. Brent it's straps it to his belt again. And it's the money <laughs> that I've given away. I kind of go like, he has a point. <laughs> Who named their riding horse Cricket? Me. <laughs> I thought you didn't name it. <laughs> no one knows. I haven't said it out loud, but its name is Cricket. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. It's tiny and pathetic, and it's cute. Don't touch Cricket. Uh, okay. Um, night uh, starts to fall on you guys, and you guys start to decide uh, on who's going to take watch. Um, let's roll for it, shall we? I feel like I would want to go first. I think Mao is slightly paranoid, and I'm worried that that, um, the magic user is going to return. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Um. You know what? If it reaches my turn, I'm going to actually just scry on the magic user since we have his shit. Oh, that's, that's true. Okay. Um... You hold on to one of his, like, uh, goods. Let's, uh, so Mao is going to go first. Uh, we do have, like, six people here. So we can each take, like, an hour, and then some people can get two hours. Uh, who wants two hours? I'll take the two hours so I can kind of scry one of them. Sure. Mao, are you taking two because you're paranoid? Or? Yep. Okay, cool. So let's do some rolls in hostile territory. Paranoid why one of the horses is named Hornsmacker now. <laughs> if that's what you get. It's just a meme. Just a meme forever. Damn it. 
Uh, okay. Now, make a perception check. You have advantage on this, uh, because of your eye thing, right? It's a visual uh, one. Uh, yes. Uh, you... Unless there's sand, because the sandstorm's still going. The sandstorm has died down during okay. the night. Um, it, it lasted for a few hours, but it, it died down eventually. Um, at some point, you see a large beetle-looking creature uh, crawl out of the ground, like, near the uh, dead bodies. Um, it starts, like, chewing away at the stuff. Um, what do you do? I'm gonna let it just eat, and I'm not gonna move or say anything or wake anyone up unless it comes at me. T-Rex style. Okay. Um, eventually, uh, you see a few more start to, like, unburrow from the ground and, like, gather towards the corpses, and they start feasting. Um, basically, nothing happens. <gasps> they eat their fill, and they drag some of the bodies into, like, their burrows um, beneath the sands, uh, but they've left only a few of the corpses behind. Um, okay, I guess we gotta at least make a mass graveyard next time, because that's creepy. It kind of reminds me of, like, the creatures from, like, Pitch Black. Yeah. So, like, with night vision, or uh, dark vision, I just see, like, kind of, like, the figments of their silhouettes coming, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah, you guys have, like, a fire set up, you're in a pretty secluded area, so you felt okay having a fire. It wasn't like signaling your position or whatever. Um, and they didn't really want to come near you guys. They didn't bother. They just wanted to feast on all those corpses. Uh, so yeah, that happens. Cool. Fun times. Uh, you wake up Zumasu for their watch. Uh, a few hours go by. Uh, nothing seems to bother you during this time. Uh, Zimasu, make a... Well, I guess you don't have to make a check. I need to make a check. Uh, because you're scrying yeah. on the dude. And we have his item. Yeah, uh, because you have his item, you actually are able to get a good look at, uh, the Devastator. It seems that they, um, they have a fire set up, uh, they're somewhere else in the Scablands. It seems that they've found a little outcropping and they've taken some tumbleweeds, uh, turned them into a little fire. They seem to have caught a rabbit that looks like it was already scorched before he impales it on a stick uh, and puts it on over the fire. Um, he isn't wearing much. He's wearing uh, just a simple cloth that he must have found. Well, I guess that's that then. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's in the mood or disposition to ambush you guys. But you're not really sure where he is. He could be anywhere in the Scablands by now. We at least have a bit of time because he ain't finding nobody for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh... I'm going to just. I'm actually going to interrupt now to just let her be put at ease. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like as I'm like resting and still like not asleep, we just be like, it's fine. I'll be like, Mao, Mao. Look at ease. I looked at into the guy and I held up like one of his belongings. He's he's literally by himself by a campfire, naked, trying to eat a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think we're fine. I'll roll over and go to sleep and kinda of giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I have made the rogue less paranoid. <laughs> yep. Impressive. Alright, uh, it looks like the rest of this evening has passed without obstruction. Um, you guys wake up in the morning, the fire has, like, petered out. Um, you guys summon some food once more, uh, to feed you guys. Uh, what happened to all the bodies? <laughs> yeah, you also wake up and you see there's a lot of holes in the ground, uh, and most of the bodies have gone. Is that normal, guys? And I kind of look to the guides. Uh, Tethys, uh, kind of gets up and starts, like, walking over. <clears throat> Let's have him attempt a 
nature check. Not sure what happened. Pran's gonna go down. And attempt an intelligence check of their own. Yeah, uh, I, I saw. You don't need to go and look. Maybe it's probably best you all stay away from the holes where the giant bugs came out of. Just saying. Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, Pran looks over at you guys. On cakes. I know these things. This is why we brought me along. Uh, and Pran kind of like looks over at Tethys. Um, Pran says, if there were ank eggs here, we probably should be moving along. But if they've eaten, they're probably no bother to us. Staying too long here, though, might come back. Well, let's kind of move on, unless we want to leave more corpses along our way from people we find. <sighs> to feed them. Tom Horn Smacker. Let's go. <laughs> Can we take any of these ballistas? Well... I mean, we have horses, we can literally hook them up. The, Should we pull the cart? Honestly, they're probably gonna slow us down. Some of the terrain is pretty treacherous. We'd have oh, to yeah. take time to lower these things, and whatnot. And honestly, oh, if we're not going on a siege, there's not much point. I mean, we are facing off against giants. We are not going to do a siege. We're, we're, we are not an army. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I think your spells can do much more damage than these things. I shot All the right. wall. It was cool. <laughs> no I arguments. hop on top of Mortimer. <laughs> you hop on top of Mortimer. Um, you guys board your... Uh, board. You guys mount your mounts. Uh, best taking your food on the go. You guys have looted the... Uh, the war wagons. They did seem to have some rations on them, so you actually can uh, take some of those with you if you wish. Um, if you wish not to have Amon's patented uh, mush cool. every day. I'll take some. Yeah, I'm taking some, definitely. Uh, there's a total of 30 pounds of food there. All in <gasps> dried meat and hard tack. I'm putting it in my bag of holding. Your blag? My blag blag of yeah, of holding. My blag of holding. Okay, uh, you shove all of this food into your bag of holding to disperse later for snackies. Um, snackies. I like snackies. There's also a I bunch... Give, I give Mortimer a big old piece of some sort of shank. Okay. Yeah, they they eat some of it, uh, and, you know, heartily. Um, the rest of the war wagons are filled with non-magical weapons and equipment, uh, most of which you probably won't need unless you need some form of weapon or equipment. I'm gonna get a crowbar. Um, they make an investigation check. I'm not sure if they'd have one, but maybe they have something like it in there. Do they have more rope? You could always use more rope. Oh, they probably have more rope. Um, you can find two 50-foot lengths. Nice. It is hemp and rope. Did they have a crowbar? No, they didn't have a crowbar, though. Uh. Okay. Let's head back to the world map. Sorry that took a bit, uh, but there was some stuff to do. Uh, drag you over. Okay, um, as you guys start making your way along, um, we're, we're, this will be very quick, I'm hoping. Uh, let's just roll... Survi nope. Survival. Getting assist from Goose, uh, once Goose returns back to you guys, uh, from above. Um, you guys do get a bit lost, unfortunately, this time. So let's roll... D6. Okay, you, d you guys do get a bit turned around. Uh, you're starting to doubt whether Tethys actually remembers how to get there. Uh, he keeps insisting, No, oh, it's... these rocks all look the same! But I, I'm pretty sure I can get us back on track. Um, meanwhile, um, I'm going to have all of you make perception checks. It's sight-based. I can't see shit. Mal, you see shit. I mean, it's mostly the row, but yeah, I'll try. I can't see what? anything! <laughs> this is the first time I actually rolled a, this low on the perception. Ooh. Oh, jeez, you yeah. have a... <sighs> okay. My my helmet fell in front of my eyes, and I'm just like I can't see anything, guys. 
It actually looks like Pran is the first to see it. Um, as you guys uh, are walking along like a large cliff face um, that you guys have probably just descended, but now you're like looking for a way back up to as you got turned around. Um, Pran looks up uh, towards the sky and goes, uh, Guys! Guys! And uh, you guys look up in the air and you see uh, the silhouettes of not one, but several uh, bat-winged creatures uh, flying high above you guys. Um, Mao, you're able to make out that they do have an apparent color to them. It is blue. Uh, and they do look to be draconic. There's about four of them. One of them is very large. Just, like, leaning back on my horse, looking over to, to Tethys and Pran. Hey, what's a big flying blue thing? With wings? Kind of bat-like? Maybe draconic? You got those around here? Pran just, like, uh, shouts to you guys, DRAGONS! Yeah, we fought them before, no big deal. We'll, we'll get these ones. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and you see that some of them, like, start turning towards, uh, your general direction, uh, and start making a circling, uh, airborne, uh, descent towards your location. Like vultures or, like, eagles? Not, not like eagles. They're not doing a straight dive towards you. Uh, but they start circling the area. Pran kind of goes, I, I don't care if you guys have fought dragons before. I don't want to fight four of them. <gasps> Uh, anyone got anything to distract those things? I don't know. Hiding's a thing? I can hide? Tethys points towards the cliff face. There's a few cracks in the cliff face. I think I've been here before somewhere. Baby. Um, fog cloud? That's a good fog idea. Fog cloud could do it. Um, you uh, unleash a fog cloud in the area, and then you start uh, running your horses along the cliff face uh, as you try and find a hiding spot. The dragons start descending. Uh, uh, one of them. Anything to send them in the wrong direction. One Let's of them the lets out a massive roar uh, that pierces the sky, uh, and there is a giant crack of lightning as a lightning bolt soars down towards the ground. <laughs> and that's where we're gonna leave it off for next time. Oh boy! Oh boy! Dragons. Four. Yep. Oop. Are all dragons intelligent or only some? Oh, I'm like stuck on this weird mode. Okay, good. I will say nothing. Uh, so nothing about blue dragons. Okay. So, uh, thanks everyone that came out to watch. Uh, we also got two subscribers during this time, so thank you for those. Uh, I didn't get a chance to uh, see who that was, but thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, for the rest of you guys, uh, you can catch this stream every Sunday from 9 to midnight, and uh, you can catch our sister stream on Wednesdays from 7 to 10, that's all Eastern Time, uh, check out my book on DriveThruRPG, and uh, yeah, have a good one everyone, we will see you next time, have a good night, peace be well, peace be.